Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for March 26th, 2018. We're going to start with public uh, comment period, please. Anybody from the public wishing to be heard? Identify yourself and your address. And Peter Tilton, 125 Landing Road. Uh, I'm not going to take three minutes to shake my finger and say, I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. I just broke down a few pertinent facts, the way I remember them. Uh, in 2017, the town was well on its way to installing two new force mains along 101. Plans and permits were in the works, and after several months of educating the public of the vital need for this project, it looked likely to pass. Shortly before the vote, acting on what I believe was bad advice, Selectman appealed the DES order to come up with a permanent solution to the old pipes. Voters now heard a new message, town leaders saying publicly there was no need to fix the problem, which perhaps wasn't a problem after all. Taxpayers don't want to spend millions of dollars without clarity, and it was enough to cause the warrant article to fail. Today we're looking at putting another expensive Band-Aid on a crumbling pipe. Going forward, if you want voters to pay for what should already be in the ground today, please don't take bad advice that causes you to take actions contrary to your goal. Keep your eye on the ball. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to be heard? Randy Cushing from Winnicott Road. Um, I just want to say thank you, first of all, to the town attorney and to our select woman for attending the Cancer Cluster Task Force today. And I particularly want to thank them for um, being assertive on the need to make sure that toxins migrating from Coakley are, don't enter Hampton's water system. Um, and I just uh, wanted you to know that uh, in January, myself and Representative Bean and Edgar and Henry Marsh, representative from North Hampton, filed a right to know request with the Coakley Landfill Group asking for some information about financers. Um, where the money goes and how decisions are being made. A similar decision was made, well, a similar <coughs> request was made by former Portsmouth uh, Deputy Mayor Jim Splain. Um, we were not satisfied with the information that we were given in the first response. Uh, last week we filed suit in Rockingham County Superior Court under the right to know law asking that uh, Coakley Landfill Group be declared to be a public entity and subject to the right to know law. And I just wanted to. Um, provide that information, I sent you all a copy of the lawsuit and just would uh, say that if the town was interested in becoming an intervener in that case, we would welcome it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to speak? Anthony Caro, uh, Earth and Stone Contracting. I'm first here to notify you that I sent the letter in today to the town manager requesting a 30-day extension on my permit to finish the rock wall I've been doing on Place Cove. I've had my equipment parked there, and it expires April 1st. And you'll be getting that letter. The other reason why I'm here is um, in reference to the smoking ban on the uh, town beaches. And I'd like to know if you people intend on implementing it like the town of Rye has. And like, I really don't see what the problem would be in turning that article into a town ordinance. This is a good thing for the beach. This is progress. Let's make the town votes count for something, please. You know, that very same vote that wanted this, this ban on smoking on the beach is the same vote that got you people in office. So let's respect them. Let's respect the voters. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wishing to be heard? Chuck Rage, Hampton Beach Village District Chairman. I just wanted to invite uh, the selectmen, the town manager, and anybody in town to understand this this Friday, the 30th at 7 o'clock, is our yearly meeting. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome to come. Uh, and 
voting at the village district starts at one and ends at and ends at seven we allow an open meeting we allow people from the town to talk and give their input uh, but the only people that can vote on our budget is residents of the Hampton Beach Village District so we would like to see some of you or all of you at our meeting thank you thank you Anybody else in the public wish to be heard? <clears throat> Diane Caro, 7 Keene Lane. As a frequent beachgoer with my children and friends and family, the smoking issue is very important to me as well. Um, it's an environmental and health hazard. The people of Hampton have recognized this by a majority vote. The voters spoke in favor of the ban, and there's no reason to assume that by posting signs notifying beachgoers of a town ordinance as such that this would present any unnecessary drain on police resources. Regardless of police involvement, to deem the ban unenforceable and therefore not worthy of support is to ignore the voices of the people in this town and is unfair to those who voted on any issue believing in the power of their vote. I speak from many fellow residents who feel very strongly that a beach without cigarette smoke is worth fighting for. Thank you. Thank you. Is it okay if I vote, if I talk for community comment? <clears throat> you want to go up and speak? Yeah. Go ahead. If you don't mind. No, yeah. it's fine. Good. <clears throat> I would also like to comment about the, the cigarette smoking. There was the, I, Rusty, you saw it, I know, because I um, called you with the Rick Griffin, 529 Ocean Boulevard. Um, about, you know, it was on the, whatever, the NBC Channel 10, and I t can't tell you how many phone calls I had. I didn't have one that was against it. I just wonder. Uh, and I realize that the board has an issue with uh, making it an ordinance, but I just <clears throat> wonder why we can't do it as, um, <clears throat> you know, that it's something that the town um, recommends or a propose, you know, I thought of the word earlier today, now I can't think of it right now. Um, but it wouldn't have to be a law. If we could just expect people to do the right thing, just like we expect them to pick up the trash, just like we expect them to pick up the dog waste, I think it's something we should consider. Um, I think the time has come for us to get our heads out of the sand and the cigarette butts too. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else in the public wishing Anybody? to be heard? Seeing none, we'll move on to the meeting. Reorganization of the Board of Selectmen. Election, election of chairman and vice chairman. I'd like to rec um, nominate Rusty as the chairman and Regina as the vice chairman. I'll second. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. It's with great. Uh, um, I'm just going to. You need to. And Jim, you need here because you're. That's all right. We'll just. Do no, this. it isn't all right. You have it traditions. Is all right. No, it isn't. You have traditions. Well, on we don't always have to do traditions. You have traditions. That's on fine. The board. You are here. Mary Louise, you just can sit down. Stay with me, Mary Louise. Chief, Mr. Chairman, I don't will you matter. make a ruling? I, I would enjoy sitting next to you. Well then. But you, yes, it's so not your can. place. To I'm asking the chairman. To turn your nose up tradition. I'm right, asking the chairman. There you go. I think people can sit where they want. Well, you're ignoring years of. Well, this we board. haven't done it in a number of years. I know that for a fact. Well, so. Who's, who's okay. So we have Story. the appointment of member to the budget committee. I'll nominate Regina. Second. Second. Anybody else? All in favor? Who's the alternate for the budget committee? Nominate Mary Louise. I'll serve if you can. All in favor? I'll abstain. Member of the planning board. I'll nominate Mary Louise Wilsley. I'll nominate it. Se I'll speak second for your uh, discussion. Okay. Any other nominations? I'd nominate Jim. As a member of the planning board? I'll second for discussion. Okay, we have two people here that both want to be on the planning board. And, you know, I don't really know what the, the fairest thing to do here. 
Uh, what else have we got? Why don't we go and look at what I'll do the others first? We don't have. Do we have that list available? No. Yet? These are no. the only two that we have to do by statute, You're right? Do elections tonight, right. and you okay. need to tell me what you want to do with the others. Okay. So we'd have to wait until we bring those up when they come up. We'll bring Why them up on next meeting. Yeah. Can we do that? Does everyone? We can think about it. What is the problem? Well, we. I think you know. I don't know. We have two people. Jim would like to do it, we and have I have five people. I mean, they could all want to do it. So, uh, I think we take a vote. Yeah, I, I think you know. I think I've been on the planning board. I work well with the planning board. I work well with the planner. Done a lot. I'd like to see what the other uh, positions are, well, so we that are. we know who's going to get what. And I have served on the planning board as well. And it's a critical thing to be on. So how many more positions do we have that we can make sure everybody has something to do here? I'm not. Uh, Jim, you also are do the uh, channel 22. No, I don't. Oh, I oh do. you don't? Rusty, Rusty does that? Was, well, I, I did that. So are you going to give that up, Rusty? I'll, I'll give any of it up. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, so. we have a list. I don't. Uh, we don't have the list with us tonight, but there's... Uh, Zoning board, planning board, school. school. There's no zoning board. Uh, there's not one of us on the zoning board anymore? No, okay, there's a was. school. Right. We have a, a reference. Liaison to the school. Liaison to the school. Yeah. We have a liaison, liaison to. Uh, Regional school, uh, Winnicunit. Winnicunit. So there's. How about trash collection? No, there isn't that either. So. Now, maybe you would like the school, Mary Louise. No, I would like to serve on the planning board. I have served on the planning board before, and it's critical. It's a critical place to be in this day and age. We have a lot of items that need to be addressed. May I say something about, I think one of Mary Louise's main concerns, and I've shared the same concern before over this past year, is that with everything we have going on in the town, pipes bursting under the marsh, wastewater treatment plant in process of finally getting some very necessary upgrades that the communication is non-existent between the Board of Selectmen and the Planning Board through no fault of anyone's own. And it's not that we want to order, I don't, it's not that we want to try to tell the Planning Board how to do anything, nor would they want us to do that to, I don't know how to say this, but we just need to talk more, I think with everything we have going on in town. And if that could perhaps start becoming the process of, I mean, we're spending $13 million and now maybe eventually another $4 million, depending on what goes on with the marsh pipes, all right? $20 million out the door. I mean, maybe it's not a good idea to just keep building. All right, sorry, I said it, okay? So I think that's what Mary Louise's main concern is and I share the concern with her. Now, if Selectman Waddell also wants the position, then it looks like we have some type of an election that we have to conduct. Who would, you know, do you know what I'm saying, Jim? I think I mean, that Yeah, is but what I want to say is the planning board's an, an elected board from us. They're not a board that's under the selectmen. They're not a board that's appointed. We have a town planner that does an excellent job, works very much in cooperation with the conservation commission, with the conservation coordinator. On the planning board, you have a diversity of opinions, all the way from somebody who's very small government, laissez-faire, to somebody who's much more controlled government. And I think they work well together. I think they've done a lot of, they have a lot of conversation about development. They just don't go willy-nilly, we can have development. You have a lot of people on that planning board who have a long history in Hampton, know Hampton extremely well, and I think they are willing to work with the selectmen. They're willing to work with anybody. But they are an elected board. They are independent of the selectmen. They are not controlled by the selectmen. And I agree. And they look at every development. They look at the zoning laws. They look at the, the RSAs. They look at the ordinances. And they do a very, very good job, I'm going to say, of what they do. I want to make a Go ahead. comment. I have served on the planning board as the selectman representative, and I have also served on the conservation commission. Fred, do you remember where you and I were in December of 2012? Mr. Welch and I were in front of the planning board asking for impact fees to be levied. The impact fees that were suggested in the planning board's own article 
in 2002. I got figures from Kevin Schultz a couple of weeks ago that showed me that he has issued building permits in this community in the amount of $583 million since 2002 through December 2017. And I looked at some of the paperwork that was in my folder that I got at the end of the week, uh, and I watched the planning board meetings. They're talking about developments in the west side of town. You know that side of town better than any of us, Rusty. And they're talking about hooking up to the sewer. We're having enough trouble, I think, right now with the sewer. And we have to take a really hard look at growth and development in this community because we're not going to be able to afford some of this stuff. Okay, so we have... And I, you know, basically I feel that, you know, I was on the planning board for probably even longer than you, Jim. Yep. And, um, you know, I do think it is good to, to move it around. And, um, you know, I didn't want to give it up, but I was kind of glad I was gone once I was <laughs> off of it, I will have to say. Um, but, you know, we have Mary Louise here that would, you know, like to go there, and I could s somehow I could see either one of you being uh, a liaison at the school, and I think you would do a good job at that. I think I'd do a good job at the planning board. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's up to a vote. Right. So we have a vote. So all those in favor of Mary Louise? All those opposed? I guess Mary Louise has it. So. I'm sorry, but that's. I think it's good to shake it up. Who's the ultimate? Jim. I'll, I'll nominate ultimate. Jim. All right. I second it. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. You know. And what about the school? We can do that right now, too. No, we gotta wait till I, we gotta, I won't wait till we have the whole list with us so we can go over the whole list because she just mentioned like, there's the uh, Conservation Commission. There's, there's a number of, of the whole I don't list. think there is one for the Conservation Commission. We have not had one at the Conservation it's, Commission. It's not a, it's it, not there official. isn't one. You don't vote. There yeah. isn't one. No, it's not a vote. Yeah, we have never a representative to yeah. it. We never have had one since well, I've been I, here, all I've 14 years. Well, then why don't we make sure we get the list to make okay, sure. Okay, I will have. tell you that we have not had so one. Why don't we make sure we get the list? I, I don't yeah. disagree Just with like you. Just like another one that's uh, been uh, is the uh, the <laughs> precinct. We've never had a, uh, you know, Regina's gone to the meetings. I went to the meetings because I was in the precinct. But before that, we never had a representative on the precinct. Mm. Okay. So, approval and everybody's free to go to the precinct at any that's right. time they or get, to they any just of the meetings. Us early. At any yeah. of the meetings. They love to see. Sure. All right, so let's have the uh, approval sure. of the minutes. I'm going down Friday. March 19th, 2008, non public session. Motion. Second. Motion by Jim, seconded by Regina. You, All those in favor? Uh, 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 you got to oh. clarify, you've got the public watching. Motion to release that so that it's public. Right I now, just said it sealed. wasn't sealed. It wasn't sealed. It wasn't sealed. So it's motion to okay. approve them. So all those in favor? Yep. Unanimous. The consent agenda. 2018 veterans credit. We have 2018 new veteran credit and veteran total disabled. Mm -hmm. We have the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, local 633, the Hampton Fire Department Supervisory Association, Local 3017 and the State Employees Association, SEIU, 1984 contract agreements. We have the appointment of the Lane Library trustees, for Diane Crow, Sheila Elwell, and Brian Abasico. Abasciano. Okay. Uh, raffle permits, Acorn School and the Sacred Heart School. We have a parade and public gathering licenses for the Hamptons Children's Parade and the one for the book, Fun Run. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, before you get farther, I, well, I'm sorry, but I'm reading the agenda. You did approval of minutes for the non-public session, but where are the regular minutes? I don't believe they're done yet. Okay, because we have... We Otherwise, have, they'd be on here. Because last week, I believe we agreed that we were going to try to... Uh, okay, but they're not here, so we don't have the them minutes. yet. I know, but I so, was surprised to see that they were Appointments, Ed Tinker. Good 
Good evening. I uh, um, presented uh, the board with uh, this year's the 2017 abatement uh, mm -hmm. recommendations. Um, there were a total of uh, 12 abatements submitted by me, seven recommended for approval, five recommended for denial. There was also two or one tax collector abatement and one tax warrant, a supplemental warrant. Those are for bookkeeping purposes only. There's no refunds involved in either one of those. So if I can answer any questions, if you have any, I do have a, um, a spreadsheet of all the abatements that were filed this year. I thought maybe everybody would want one just sure. to have. So. Thank you. Thank you, sir. As you can see, there's the I needed more paper then. <laughs> 20, no, 20, 23 residential abatements that were filed this year, um, three commercial and two utility. The commercial and utility, of course, are uh, somewhat a continuation filing based on pending yeah. appeals that are pending on for those for those businesses. Um, so tonight, of course, I've got 12 of the um, 23 residential ones for you. Okay. Okay. If you have I, any questions, I can answer those. I have reviewed yeah. the copies that Mr. Tinker gave us, and I'm happy to move to accept. All right, I'd rather go to the board first. Jim? I'm set. I've read them all. They're, I agree. Jim? I have no questions. Thank you. Rick? I agree with them all, so. Okay, so Mary Louise has made a motion. Is I'll there a second, second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. You need, you need a motion for the tax collector supplemental warrant. All right, I need a motion for the tax collector supplemental warrant. Motion. Second. Motion by Rick, seconded by Mary Louise. All those in favor? Unanimous. Hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Christy Coleman. Right. I jumped the gun, sorry. <laughs> no, you were doing good. <laughs> All right, I have three items for you guys this evening. Um, I'm not sure which order they are on the agenda. You want me to start with my financials? or February, do you want me to, Yep, okay. I'll start with the... Yeah. All right, so in your boxes, very late on Friday, I apologize, but I also emailed them out. You shall, should have received the financials for the month of February. Uh, the first thing that I pointed out that it does include the default budget, which was passed by the voters at, at the election. So that column has been populated. And in January, when I was here, we had just been using the 2017 budget because we hadn't had a budget yet. The target for the month is 16.7%. Um, the revenue, when you look at the revenue report, you can see that the difference in revenue from 2017 to 2018 the 2018 revenue is higher than 2017 by $99,545. The month's total income was $537,410. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $261,962. Interest on taxes at $10,004. Building permits at $26,862. Departmental income at 14219 Land rent at 164928 That's always billed out because it's due on April 1st. So that's billed usually sometime in February. District court fines at 14788 And the real estate trust at $38,414. On the expense side, uh, we are we were current at the end of February we were 15.62% spent or under budget by $266,997. Um, let's see I already said that I put in the account there. Um, many of the departments across the budget you will find light items that are already over 50% expended. In most cases, this is related to semi-annual or annual payments made for things such as software support contracts, hydrant building, billing, which is done twice a year, chemical purchase orders for public works is done in January for the year, um, and town report expenses and et cetera, items, similar items like that. 
Under personnel administration, you will see that the bank buyback line is 103%, 103.03% spent. As I explained last month, this is processed once a year in, in January, so nothing else will be spent from that line. In the Public Works Department, you will notice that a few of the line items under snow and ice removal are running high, which yeah. is common at this point in the year, as we all hope the snow will soon come to an end. On pages 17 and 18, you will find that I've entered all the warrant articles that were passed at the town meeting, along with the articles that the board voted to bring forward from the previous year. So all of those uh, fields have all been updated on the report. Fund 24, the recreation, has a balance of $182,435. Fund 25, the cable committee, has a balance of $507,921. Fund 26, for private detail, has a balance of $135,285. And Fund 27, the EMS fund, has a balance of $692,443. I did add there, though, that there is an outstanding purchase order for an ambulance of 234931 So that takes a chunk of that, uh, 692000 Wastewater system development charge. Um, the fees collected in 2018 total $1,596 with a balance in this account of 198238 with $96,722 in approved expenditures from the board. And that wraps up the monthly financials for February. Very good. Jim. Yeah. Uh, motor vehicles, 261.962. That's up, same, lower. Oh, let's see. Hmm. It is, let's see. It was 600 and, I only have it by the um, whole year as a total, but it's over about 30,000 over, about 40,000 over, no, 30,000 over what it was in 17 at the end of February. Okay. So the revenue up 99,000, part of that would be the motor vehicles yep. and, and the rest would be the... Oh, uh, let's see. I think we have, um, let's see if we have any state money. Yeah, we had two state payments so far in 18, which we didn't have in 17. We had um, a highway subsidy payment of 63,246 and the state water pollution control at 21,205, which we hadn't received in February of 17. So that accounts for an, another chunk of um, that money. 84000 right there. Okay. And I had uh, departments that are over. Departments that are over? Mostly due to one time. Most, would yeah, all I would, be I due to one time? Or? I looked through that today, and everyone, some uh, payroll lines are slightly over, but I think it's because there was a five-week uh, payroll in, February, in either January or February. So I think that is why some of those wage lines are running a little bit high. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think everyone is... Uh, is okay okay at this on, point. on one um traffic control and pa patrol mm -hmm. vacation wages were o over pretty much no is that because they get paid all at once or or a lot of winter vacations control? vacation yeah oh i'm sorry i was in crime control traffic control the vacation line is at 29 Nine. i think it's just based on when people take their vacation it's not a payout or anything it's just for vacation time that people are using so this is their quieter time, so maybe more people are prone to take vacation at this time of year down there. Okay, and if one, not like staff development, that would be because of one? Staff development, a lot of those lines are small money anyway, so if anyone's just taking like one or two courses or whatever, that could, okay. you know, bring those numbers up because they're small dollar values. And then communications, uh, the rentals and leases were up 66%. Rentals and leases, my guess would be that that's some kind of a contract. Okay. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Yep. Uh, Christy, thanks for the report. I see even with the default, we are still slightly underspent. So, yes. great job. Thank you. Kirk? Yeah, and thank you for sending this out. I we couldn't find my packet, but I was able to see this right online. It's very easy to uh, follow. You do a great job. Thank, thank you. you. All right, Louise? Christy, I have a couple of questions, and I'm looking at the, this one, the, the attachment to the February. Um, I hope I have the right one. I've got preliminary design downtown, and it shows two ninety-seven thousand five hundred. Is that? It's not showing as an encumbrance. Does it mean that's what has been spent? That's what was brought forward. That's what was brought. So that money is still available. 
Yeah, they had 30,000 come in from the, yeah, Experience the, Hampton. Um, Experience Hampton. But that's not 297,500. I think there's 32,000, I believe, for Unitel out there. Is that correct, Jen? So I think that 30,000 from that came in from, so I guess 32,000 of it is spent through an encumbrance, through a purchase order, I believe. But that article, Article 44, yep. lapses on the 34, first of this month. I believe they have a contract that they're working on. I'm not directly involved in it, so. Is there a contract? Yeah, because it just signed for this yeah. week. That was Before the 31st. Before the deadline, yes. Phew, okay. And then um, Sidewalks shows 2017 warrant article 25,000. Am I... I'm trying to figure out what. Box 2017. That wasn't Article 44. Nope, um, it's Article 22, and 20. there's 25,000 that was brought forward from 2017 for that article. Okay. And so there's no, and that doesn't have a lapse date? It has a lapse date, but I'm guessing it's. I would have to go back and look at the article. There's no date written on here. It doesn't elapse. Right. This it gets, year, it's believe. just a little confusing. Okay. Um, so the preliminary design for Article 44, the 2015 article for downtown, is that's the one that is about to be finalized before we hit the March 31st deadline. So we get to keep the 30,000 from Experience Hampton and and have the whole article pretty much ready to spend. It's confusing. Well, we brought forward all of the money. I just do the money piece of it. Whether the contracts are being signed or how close they are, I don't know because I'm not involved I, in that. So I think the article was for 300,000. It was for 300,000. Experience Hampton said they'd pay 30,000. And they've given us that. that check. I believe they did a check. Yep. So you It's sitting in that Warren article. Okay. So you're all set on that one for the for the Now, Article 9. Article 9 from, from 18 or I'm trying to figure out where's Article where 9. I am here. I don't see an Article 9 on here, I don't think. Let's see. It, actually, it might be more fair for me to ask my question when um, Mr. Jacobs and Mrs. Hale come up. Okay. So why don't we, we hold on that temporarily? Okay. Thank you for your report. You're welcome. All righty. Very good. Thank you. Okay. At least the, it shows we have money. The other items that I had for you that I need signatures on and votes to approve are... The investment policy that we adopt on a yearly basis, I have reviewed that and sent it off to the treasurer because she's the one who gets to handle all of the money. Mm -hmm. um, and so she has approved this and is fine with all of the wording. So I had sent that off to you guys and have a copy here. That if you have questions, I may be able to answer them, but like I said, it's all up to Ellen. And this is a, we did not make any changes in here from previous years. It's just the board needs to adopt it every year. Okay. Um, so. Any questions on the, uh, for that? Are there any no. questions first on the uh, appropriations? No, this is an investment, investment policy. Investment yep. policy. Yeah. Right. Do we need Same a motion enough? for it? Yes, we need a motion. I'll second Mr. I'll Griffin. make the motion. Motion seconded. All those in favor of the investment policy? Okay, so I'll yeah. pass that around okay. in a minute for you guys to sign, and then you can leave that with Fred. And then the last thing I have That's is the MS-232. It's just the appropriations as voted by the town. Um, so they have all been uploaded onto the DRA website and just has all of the articles that were passed at town meeting. And so it has to be signed off by the Board of Selectmen also. Okay, do we need a motion to I'll do make that? that motion. Second. Okay, all in favor? I just have one. One question, yep. go ahead. Um, so we have forty one million nine hundred sixty three six seventy eight. Yes. Do you have a tax effect for that? Uh, not on this whole amount because some of that is in regard regards to the Warren article, but I do have um, where did that go? I do have the tax impact on all of the ones that will affect us in the this given year. Oh, okay, because some great. of this the DRA form takes into consideration all of the bonded articles and stuff mm -hmm. that are, um, and all the unassigned okay. fund balance. So basically I did do up the tax impact on all the money articles that passed that didn't, 
we're not bonds or we're not part of the unassigned fund balance and it's 36 cents okay. was the tax impact for the uh, money articles that did pass including the difference in the default budget as opposed to the 2017 budget so um i do warn people though that the 36 cents doesn't mean that that's the only impact on the tax rate because they take revenues <laughs> into consideration <laughs> the values of the property depending on what ed submits for his april 1st deadline so I don't want anyone to come and say, hey, my tax rate should have only gone up 36 cents. But that's the imp the money impact of those articles that were passed. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good anticipation, Christy. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank so I'll leave these so here. Much. You guys can pass those yeah. around and Fred will bring them to me tomorrow. Thank you. Good. Thank you. You do such a great job Thank and you. it gives everybody a lot of confidence that you're at the helm. Thank, Thank you. you. Do you dream in numbers? No. <laughs> Try not to. Hey, Just in you? totals. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next up is uh, Chris Jacobs and Jennifer, Jennifer Hale. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. What is the first thing we have on the uh, for ours is uh, approval of a contract. In a minute. Is that the first one? Yeah. Uh, I have no pawn there. Yeah. Sent over last week uh, a request uh, for this board to authorize the town manager to enter into a contract with RC and D Inc. They were the low bidder for the Mill Pond Dam project that went out to bid uh, before the vote. Uh, we did put it on hold uh, with. RCD agreeing to hold their bid price to make sure we wouldn't have to go backwards and do this again. This is um, the Mill Pond Dam. Mill Pond Dam. You said Meadow Pond. I just want to make sure. It's near Meadow Pond, but it is Mill Pond. <laughs> just want to make Sorry, Mill Pond Dam. We know what we're doing. Uh, so we are looking to enter into a contract with them to authorize them to start the uh, renovation, restoration, and relocation. The total of RCD's. Uh, contract is for $496,815. Uh, as we had mentioned last time we were here, it was put out to bid according to the purchasing policy. We had eight firms respond. They were the lowest and responsible bidder. Any questions? Yeah, I read it this morning, today. Looks good. Uh, are we pretty sure? Do we have any guarantees if it goes over? I was taught in college that guarantees are only for mufflers. Um, <laughs> it was. One of my professors taught me that. Uh, right now, we obviously built contingency into the actual bid. There's a line item there for things that come up, you know, from loam and seed to, you know, we needed to pour an extra piece of concrete just because you can't know everything. Uh, we did investigation work beforehand, so we know where ledge is and, we have our survey and those type of things. Uh, part of this bid process, uh, Par Corporation went out and actually called every one of these uh, references that were provided uh, to make sure that they were capable of doing this work, had experience doing this work, is familiar with um, blocking the water, being able to control the water. Um, dam building is not for everyone. Uh, so there's confidence in our numbers that we have money within our uh, allotted amount to get this job done. Also had a um, email conversation with uh, Alan Orsi's, the engineer for Par Corporation, uh, specifically with the idea of change orders. Um, reiterating that, as Fred's trained me, we don't do change orders. Um, in other words, don't sit back and keep your mouth shut and think that you're going to be able to submit a change order later on and that, you know, you're going to get paid for it. Uh, this subject got brought up when we were talking about the, uh, they have to do a safety plan, traffic control safety plan. Um, there is a section of sidewalk there that's going to, you know, probably get impacted, i.e., we're going to be working very closely to it. So um, he reached out. Uh, Alan did with the uh, contractor and assures me that no, there's going to be no need for, for change orders. Um, so 
I, as I told him, I said, I've been here five years. I've seen Fred be glad to sign one, and that was begrudgingly, well, for a $12,000 credit. So we don't, you know, we don't do change orders, period. And we let every, all these contractors know it. So there's a whole email chain to that effect. Um, so if they start to whittle that uh, that way and think they're going to get one, they're not. They're going to have to find some other way to make up the money. But we don't do change orders. Thank you. Jenny? So this 496, 815, that's going to use funds from both the 16 Warren article, what's left over in there, in the, and the then the extra that we, the town voted for in 18. Yes. Just because there was some, you know, clarification as to where that money had gone, whether it was in, so it looks like uh, we're going to need what we have uh, built up to get this bit yes. done. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Rick? No, nope, it sounds good to me. Thank you. Mary Louise? Yep. Um, 2016, Article 20. Um, it was for $147,500 with 73750 or half of that amount to come for the unfunded um, from the UFB. We, it, that article did not pass, so we're not tapping the undesignated fund That had to do with the, also the replacement of culverts under High Street. It never got approved. It's not on the script. Right. It's not even being considered. It's, okay. We don't think of it. Now this contractor that, that you and I've read through uh, is from Rhode Island. Foxborough, was Mass. Nobody oh. from local who Yeah, our, our engineers are from Foxborough. Sorry, but. yeah. No, there was not a local contractor who right. came in as a lower bid with the same amount of experience. Right. Now, this is a touchy area and a touchy subject. And especially after our, our experience, and we'll be mentioning Church Street Line later on. I would like to suggest, I would like to respectfully suggest to you that we keep a photographic record. Doesn't have to be every minute of the construction, but I would like to see a photographic record kept, a DVD or something, for the stages of construction. So if 10, 15, whatever years down the line, there are issues, we have something to fall back on mm -hmm. other than a piece of paper. So I would like to see people out there with a camera we're, occasionally. We're already, no, we're already doing it. Um, okay, that Par, makes me happier. PAR will have their inspector out there. They will be taking photos. The contractor, I'm sure, will be taking photos. Um, we will be taking photos. Um, Drake Side Road that we completed last summer, I have in excess of 200 photos. Excellent. Showing dirt being moved. So um, it's uh, inexpensive information to store. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it is, it's already part of our process. So we don't have to worry about kickback or something because if we see a deficiency or whatever, then we'll have it in print so that we have some recourse. Well, if necessary. We're going to get uh, daily and weekly uh, construction reports from PAR. I'm sure there's going to be uh, the portion of the work is concrete. We're going to have uh, concrete cylinders uh, collected, tested. So oh, the, this will be documented six ways to Sunday. Excellent. And I have another um, question on the culvert <clears throat> because, as you know, that's a dreadfully sensitive area with flooding and Meadow Pond and Kings Highway and all that stuff. You know better than I do mm -hmm. the dangers there. What's going to happen to the existing see. culvert? Culverts under High Street? Yeah. Absolutely nothing. It will still be there? Still be there. And you think it will handle comfortably the it, overflow or whatever you call it? It shows in the major events that it would, you know, get overtopped. It's, we've known this for years by one or two tenths. Of water, because that end floods every year, practically. Yeah. yeah. So um, while it would have been nice to do that work, it isn't what you. One project is not tied to the other, so High Street can be done at some other point in time. So at some point in time, irrespective of what happens with the dam <coughs> construction, right. we would have the ability yep. 
to replace that culvert if need be. Yep. Okay, well that makes me feel happier. See, your mission is accomplished. So do I have a motion for the? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Motion to accept the bid from R C and D. Yes. In the amount of four ninety six eight fifteen. Yes, I'll make and that motion. And I'll so move to second. authorize the manager to sign the uh, contract. All those in favor? Did I get a second? Unanimous. She already. She, she already did. Okay. Good. So okay. Now we have the authorized, okay, the authorized the town to do it. Now Church Street, Force Main. Uh, a number of you do have uh, in your packets or uh, a memo that um, Jennifer prepared and uh, we issued on Saturday. Um, this is an ongoing um, process. There's no, um, I want to say minute by minute, uh, hour by hour, the numbers change. Uh, inf more information is coming in, et cetera, et cetera. To bring you up to speed, what happened? Um, this past Tuesday, yeah, thank you, because I want to keep saying Monday. But Tuesday, we were doing, uh, we're following our standard operating procedures that we agreed upon with the state. We had, um, we were testing, pressure testing the ductile iron force mate. This is the same one that broke two years ago mm -hmm. This and was fixed this month two years ago um, it would not hold pressure we continued from like two o'clock in the afternoon till about four o'clock in the afternoon trying to get the thing to hold pressure uh, my staff kept me up to date that it wouldn't hold um, but we didn't know whether it was debris stuck under one of the gates or if it was in fact broken uh, Wednesday morning they came in we put a much larger compressor on it um, bringing the pressure, let's say, from 5 pounds to 10 or 12 pounds. Yeah. Uh, they walked uh, the side of the line closest to the plant, then went to the Church Street location and started walking the, the path of the line. That's when they noticed that, in fact, it was broken. Um, we had air being forced up through the um, effluent right up to the surface of the marsh. Um, they radioed. Uh, others that were on, on the dry side of the world to uh, shut the pumps off, um, it's in fact broken. Uh, how it's broken, we don't know. We don't know if a piece is missing out of it, if a joint has separated, if it's a similar type of failure to what occurred two years ago. We, we, we still don't know and won't know until we got, get out there and excavate it. Um, the real, um, and I and let me before I get into the process. Um, we've been regularly checking the flow of uh, the tidal waters under Tide Mill Creek. It has not exceeded, uh, the limit is 100 uh, fecal count, and it has never exceeded 100 fecal count. Got up to, I believe, 87, yeah, 87.8 on one test, but that's, uh, and that was in the area directly adjacent to the failure. Out at uh, Tide Mill Creek, it's been one part per MPN and 11 MPN. It's, that stands for mm -hmm. micro, whatever. Um, the point is, uh, there's been no environmental damage. Uh, the clam flats are open. Uh, Chris Nash with the uh, Shellfish Bureau has been doing his own test testing. Uh, there is no, um, if you will, uh, big area or effect. The reason why is, this particular failure area is totally surrounded by marsh grass. The previous one, it was in an area where if the effluent did rise up in it, it quickly had a path to a minor tributary that would then go to a creek, which then went to Tide Mill Creek. Uh -huh. This is a totally different location. Um, it's a, probably a thousand feet different from the location that we were before. It's only about 300 feet um, out away from the Church Street parking lot is shown by um, the sketches that Jennifer put together and I'll call your attention to that one. So what is the process? Obviously we want, we want to get out there and fix it. Irregardless of whatever subsequent moves we take, we do need to fix that force main now. Um, the reason being is it, it's apparent to us that even if we were to, let's say vice 
we, we went to move to find the money to get it done in, in 2018 somehow, some way, you'd still need this pipe repaired so that we can go back online so that the beach can open so that um, we can proceed with business as normal. So then, it, and, and that's what we're, we're actively working on. We have a cost out with several, uh, a cost out request from Severino Construction. And we also have a cost request in, we're waiting for from, it's called the Maybe Matt Company. It's a guy's last name. M-A-Y. M-A-B-E-Y. M-A-B-E-Y, and it was English. Um, so, because it's much shorter, uh, you know, in the road path to get out there, and because we also own the pipe, uh, when it occurred three years ago, Severino had the wisdom to buy or to order and get Thank delivered you. to the site three pieces of pipe. Huh? We only used one of them. We still have two pieces of pipe there. So we have the pipe. Um, we may have to buy a few fittings, but again, the biggest cost to get out there will be, uh, or to fix it, will be actually getting ourselves out there to do it. Uh, when we do have it open, um, this time I do plan on uh, doing some cleaning and um, and some video inspection. I want to see what's going on in, in the direct, as far as we can get down either side uh, with the camera. Um, two years ago, that was not really possible because the pipe was so chucker, block full of waste, and um, we'd have been out there for a week trying to clear it just to get a a view um, but the pipe the remainder of the pipe that was out there two years ago was intact it had no other deficiencies to it so the decision was made then to if you will make the repair secure it pressure test it and get out of the marsh before the next big tide cycle but this time we're going to approach it slightly different uh, partially because um, I'm seeing a different type of failure response around the the pipe. There's a lot of beach sand. Um, if you look at this photo here, the bottom one, that's beach sand in a 360-degree mm -hmm. peripheral around that pipe. Um, what that lends itself to is that the high flows that we experienced on uh, March 2nd and 3rd when we had the uh, nor'easter uh, tide comes in that heavy we get one and a half to two million gallons of seawater through there well when we did um, obviously it pushed a little bit of beach sand too so where that's coming from that's what i'm going to be looking for and um, for those that are probably not aware that amount of beach sand in the effluent acts as an abrasive to the pipe to any pipe we've lost a number of pipes interior to the wastewater treatment plant because they've actually been eroded from the inside out because it's literally been sandblasted and we've had pipes that we've taken apart and it, they've been paper thin so i'm not saying that that's the actual cause but it does that sand there gives me something to look for something, when we're out something there. else to look for something else that has to be vetted I've also talked with the state. They'd like to come down when we do make the repair. They'd like to see the pipe for themselves. Told them not an issue. We'd uh, we'd invite them down. Uh, beyond that, we then it would be um, after the repair. Then there has to be a discussion of where where do we stand with this? How do we um, continue to, or how do we prepare ourselves ultimately for this? The pipe has to be replaced. Um, I know you're aware of it. That's why we spent the money to have the engineering done and the plans put together. That's why we finally have all the permits. Um, it was even in the last month that we were, where am I thinking? The, you're thinking the dam, but I'm thinking of the we do. We water. have our wetland yeah. permits and our Army Corps permits. Right. Uh, Which, the last piece of this that I mentioned in the memo is there's still a DOT, mm, a DOT component. Uh, the use and occupancy agreement uh, that would need to happen but uh, the other two permits are still in effect and have not expired right so that's where we stand questions from the board yeah what approximate cost of getting out there I know last time it last time it was 130 I'd say a hundred thousand hundred thousand to get yeah. out there one of the big things that 
although it's a much shorter distance if you're looking at the plan that has the yellow um, that yellow line is actually drawn over you can see in the area where the mats were so that's the exact path it took last time uh, to get out there the machines can't turn 90 degrees on these mats so everything sort of has to be angled as you're moving so we'll need to set up a perimeter of mats and maybe work towards shore or towards the church street pump station instead of uh, towards the wastewater treatment plant like we did last time so i'll be it that the distance out there is only a third of the way and one bridge less it's still one bridge that's going to take four spans uh, to get over it and then we're going to need this 60 by 60 landing at the other side in order to turn around the excavator so, so we're talking a hundred something thousand. Your number, your numbers in there. I mean, from some of the preliminary yeah. stuff to we've gotten to back. Totally repair it. We're talking one hundred and fifty. Yeah, because we have the pipe. There's some fittings I need to buy. A hundred, in and around a hundred. No, a hundred to get out there, and then you got to repair. Well, well he last said time, hundred altogether. Okay, the I last time, heard. the hundred and thirty thousand we spent. <clears throat> yeah, was one hundred and twenty to arrive there. Yeah, it was nine thousand nine hundred and thirty-eight dollars to make the repair. Okay, so the repair is inexpensive in comparison to preparing to arrive to the job. Yeah. And due to the, the age of the pipe, if it's an older pipe, there would be less, would take less abrasion to make a hole than it would in a new pipe? Yeah, sure. So but yeah, it's like, things, you know, it's like, it's like potholes working on shocks of a car. If they've got 100,000 miles on them, a standard pothole can probably take out a shock. Brand new car, for the new shock can probably handle it. Um, but beyond that, we're speculating. And contaminants uh, being released now, any? None. The, the pipe is shut down. Um, we are going to have, I think it's tomorrow or Wednesday. 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 Um, we're going to go in on the Church Street side and we're going to vacuum out the remaining effluent in the pipe so that um, it doesn't. As tides come in and come go out, they don't pick up additional waste and carry it with them. Plus, we're going to need it out of, out of there anyhow if we're going to work there. And the, the tide cycle right now is, is good for you or bad? So April 6th to April 14th is the best window to do these repairs. Uh, that gives us tides that are 8-4 and lower uh, in that cycle. After that, we start getting higher. and that's about the tide cycle we were in last time with the repairs, and we don't want to go any higher than that. Okay, thank you. Sure. Regina? So, two weeks, you've been testing this pipe two weeks ever since. Right. The last time this pipe was tested was actually February 28th. And the pressure was fine then? The pressure was then. fine then. And then we had the big storm. Yep. And then you tested it after that, and then you instantaneously knew that the pressure was not right it was not holding right okay and we took lots of excess water over those few yeah, days well, of that storm yeah the pump station handle had a lot of excess water coming in and and it was pushed over to the plant through both pipes what effect that as i say when I, when we see the kind of defect that we have the kind of break that we have failure Right. will know more as to cause and effect. Okay. And then you can see whether or not maybe it's just because it's old and there was, or there was something wedged against it or it was because of all the sand and water. Could have been because of all the sand and the water. We, uh, we well, were not we reluctant it. last week when uh, Friday we went around with FEMA. I think they sent in eight or nine people. We were out, went around town and that was one of the things that we floated to them <laughs> that we did, we have this documented failure right after a major storm event, two major storm events. And that pipe's been monitored for pretty much two years. Yes, and it, and and it was in w good working condition, held pressure on the 28th of February. All right, great, thank you. Yep, Rick? <clears throat> yes, I think it's important to remember that this is the newer of the old pipes. Right. And I think that anything we're doing right now is just speculation because we really don't know what's happening. Right. And I, I think that's different than what's been reported in the newspaper. They make it sound like it's the same as last time. It definitely isn't. Um, I think that um, 
you know, as far as we see that the sand is there, I would like to definitely, um, I feel we have to find where that sand is coming from mm -hmm. and if the state has any responsibility. If it's coming from Ocean Boulevard, uh, you know, we need to, uh, to realize this. And, you know, I, their drain system there, we don't really, as far as I'm, I know, we don't know a lot about it. I mean, some of it drains directly onto the beach. Some of it drains directly into the water because I can stand there and see the um, pipes, um, the water coming into the manholes. I've stood there and watched mm -hmm. it when the waves go. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is something that we have to really look. I think it's um, that we need to take a look to see what FEMA did down in New Jersey when they had pipes that were affected by sand mm -hmm. and mud and stuff like that that came. And did they pay? pay? Did the government, the federal government, um, give some money here? Um, I feel that, um, you know, this, it's going to be good that we see that there is something totally different happening this time, and this needs to help us make the decision that we're going to make. Okay. It may be something that's very easy to fix. We don't really know. Correct. And I think it's a godsend that the sand's coming out there because that shows us that it's definitely something completely different than what was happening the last time. And I know the last time I thought, um, really, it was a lot, great deal of work and um, safety was achieved with that $130,000. And I'm glad to hear that it's going to be less than that this time. Um, and I think it's going to be easier for you because you've been to the rodeo before. Um, and it's going to be, I think we have to keep an open mind and see exactly what this is. We have a lot to learn here. We and do. I'm glad that um, you're going to have this experience and you'll be able to lead us the right way. <coughs> You've just been waiting for this experience, I'm sure. I don't know, you got to ask Christy if she dreams in numbers. I have nightmares <laughs> in force means. <laughs> okay, folks. The last breach looked like a, not a round hole. Mm -hmm. It looked like it had been rubbed on, chewed on, something or other. This looks to me like sand has been blasted up from water pressure. It doesn't look to me like it's sand that was in the pipe. The sand is under all the pipes out there. You're well, in the marsh. No. No. This, the pipe out there is actually when they take out the marsh muck, I call it, because it's not really soil and it's not really loam. They laid in a cloth, and they bedded it in stone, three-quarter inch process crushed stone. Okay. And then they lay the pipe in that. So there is no beach sand directly around this pipe. But, or in the marsh. Or, or directly in the marsh. Way but we do get yeah, beach sand mm -hmm. through our system and into the plant because, um, well, we always attribute it to people, you know, taking showers after spending the day at the beach. Yeah. Um, I know four to five years ago we had in Ted Berry Company and they jet after right after we built the church street pump station they cleaned the brown out force main when they did because they used a lot higher velocity um, they pushed all that sand what they didn't vacuum out pushed it right into the bottom of the church street pump station and we and we had to remove it from there oh. so part of what i the reason why i think this is storm related is when you've got that strong of a tide come in, you increase the velocity, you've got some infiltration to the sewer system, separate from the drainage system, it increased the velocity through those lines. You basically scoured them, pushed that material into the pump station, and the pump station continued to push it across the marsh. And, and that's where I think a majority of that sand comes from. So it was partially related to the high volume of water we had the flooding. And that's why I think it's storm event related. Chris, the last time the pipe went, you cut the section out. We could see it. You put pictures there. Yep. Um, what does the pipe look like? Now, have you actually had a chance to see it? We have not. You haven't seen if it looks similar to what the first one was. Oh, no. You can't tell. How long is the pipeline? How long is that ductile pipe? 
Well, it's from the pump station to the wastewater treatment plant, it's 4,000 feet long. Okay. And that's what, 20 foot segments of yes. pipe? Okay. Now, um, when do you have the report when that line was, was actually placed in the marsh? Do you have reports on hand that show how that was done? And the reason I'm asking that is it was proposed or assumed with the first break, with the hole, that the line was rubbing on a rock mm -hmm. that had been placed there mm -hmm. to stabilize the line or whatever. When Can you lay you... a full length of pipe like that, we normally, in, in the sewer business, they'll hold up the, the forward edge of the pipe and part for two reasons. One, they come in by hand and we call it chinking. You literally force the stone underneath the bed of the pipe. Mm -hmm. you, you want it to be supported. Mm -hmm. You don't want the pipe to have to flex. Yeah. Before they actually did that, this, pla this pipe is actually has a plastic liner around it, uh, a rather big sleeve. Well, the only way humanly possible to pull that sleeve down the pipe is you've got to be supporting this end of it. Well, the rock that I have in, in, the, in the hole that, again, was in the paper the other day, yeah. they're, they're like left and right hands. They match. So, it, it, so it's obvious to me that somebody wedged in a stone and held that pipe up while they were pulling down the plastic liner mm -hmm. and then chinking the stone in and just literally forgot to take the stone out. But you can't see the rest of the pipe. No. Because if... I'd have to investigate every... Well... What I'm getting at is if the... Uh, if that's not unique, if somebody used stones at all the bell joints for the 4,000 feet, because mm -hmm. you've got 20-foot ductile iron pipe, if you've got that underneath the bell joints all along then we have a bigger problem with who installed that line. And I don't know if there's an inspection report or if there are any pictures from when the line was actually being put in because I'm wondering if we could have possibly some type of... Um, We've, I found no course. photos. Hmm? We found no photos. From we found no photos. So you're, found you're running blind right now. No inspection reports. Okay. Um, it's almost... We know who did the inspection. Mm -hmm. um, we have nothing documenting that. It's, it's so what you're going to be looking at now is to see if it was the practice of whoever installed it. I don't remember who did it. Right. To see if you have stones at the bell joints for the pipe all yeah. the way through. Well, it's a possibility. You haven't been down there yet. Isn't it a different type of pipe? No, it's, it's, the same it's the same as best as concrete pipe. No, no, it's, no, ductile it's a ductile line. Yeah. Same yeah. Ductile line. And that's supposed to be a good pipe. You know, I'm just speculating. This, I carried the stone from where we found it back <laughs> into the yard. Yeah. I wouldn't have wanted to carry that stone on a daily basis from pipe section to pipe section. I'm, I'm a little too smart for that. No, I so mean, I think I would have had a piece of wood or something that I would have used more frequently. So I don't still don't know where the. You don't think they deposited the stones at all the bell joints to no, stabilize? No. If, well, you going to find they did, out? <laughs> wow, that would be catastrophic yeah. if they did. Stones always work up from the ground too. Besides. Only only with frost action, and this mm -hmm. marsh never freezes. Yeah. There's no way it's that not. stone could have risen, right. if you will, like frost action in a in a, in a New England field. Because the frost doesn't go that deep, it, it can't physically lift it. Mm. The stone is heavier, denser than the marsh right. muck it's in. If anything, it would settle out to the bottom. Sink. I just want to ask one thing. Yeah, you know, one thing that I wanted before I lost train of my thought here is that I want to make sure that um, if there is a replacement done here, that this same sand wouldn't affect a newer replacement. I mean, is there a way to stop that sand from getting in there, whether it's a new pipe or an old pipe? If we 
probably complete the all the sewer line replacement in the beach district and get rid of all the clay pipe that was there mm -hmm. um, and do some other minor things to like seal up some of the manholes we could probably cut down on a good portion of the sand mm -hmm. but uh, we still have remaining work to do in that in, mm -hmm. over in the beach area how much of that drainage is still left because we did do some work down there I want to say 40 percent there's still as much as 40 yeah. percent Thank you. Several million dollars worth of Regina. pipe that has to be replaced. Just one thing, Mr. Chairman. So we're sort of at a standstill right now until we can actually figure out what is why the pipe is broken. Right. I mean, we're yeah. We're, what we're telling you is that we're going to vet these prices, bring them forward, ask you to you know, I'll I'll tell you what part of my budget I'm, what project I'm not going to do, and how I'll pay for this, and ask you to. Uh, support contracts to get this repaired and hopefully within our April time window and then once we see that well, we'll um, have to have this discussion of right was right. it the same was it different was it something else well, something right. that's the same to me is that we don't know if there's anything wrong with these pipes until they don't work anymore so I think that's something that we need to consider once we obviously we need to fix the pipe for the summertime right. it's gonna be June pretty soon but so whatever we need to do to get that done but after that, I think we need to consider future-wise what we're going to do because the, actually, like Rick said, the other pipe that hasn't even had an issue is actually the old one right. by like 20 years. And they've both been sitting under saltwater marsh and the storms are getting worse every year. And yeah, so I yeah think the other pipe is 60 years, 61 years old and this one's 31 years old. Yeah. It's a changing Rusty. environment. Rusty, I had one more. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, will you be taking pictures again as oh, you're yeah. excavating? You will have a series because to document. There's a ton of photos from the first time. There'll be Excellent. another ton from this time. Excellent. And it is, just to make sure it's clear, it is the same pipe. It's the same one that we're it having exactly the, pro the same problem pipe. with. Yeah. That's right. And we have not heard you back yet from DEFs. DES has uh, called to offer whatever assistance they can give us. This would take an emergency authorization. Uh, very similar to what we did last time, which is the permit um, that you fill out in the beginning. They authorize it. You tell them the means and the methods of what you're going to do thing, and then we're required to fill uh, to file a full dredge and fill permit afterwards. Okay. And you're referring to the wetlands wetlands permit. permit. I've spoken with uh, the head of uh, Environmental Services Water Division. Um, their their feeling is the same, pretty much the same as yours. They're not willing to rush to judgment till we see what. Mm -hmm. this particular defect or failure is and what caused it um, I did invite them down you know to see how we do what we do where it's located um, they said more than likely this time they will take us up on that come down and see it um, I know Rusty the last time you were able to walk walk out there um, it, the mats are very stable I wouldn't we'll let you know when we're going and if you all want to come out there and if you're uncomfortable, we can put you in a car and and and, and literally drive right out there. So it is. It's a. Uh, it's pretty amazing to put see that heavy of equipment on the marsh and. Yeah. It's still scary. The reason why we take so many pictures is we had cameras. If Jennifer fell through, we had a bet the first time. <laughs> she didn't fall through, so we didn't have to pay out the bet. But that's we do take a ton of pictures, especially it's, if it's that happens. Experience. It's learning. Yeah. So the biggest thing is get the pipe fixed. Yeah, we got to move see forward. what what caused it, and then go from there. Go from there, right? At least it took your mind off the snow. <laughs> this is not the kind of thing <laughs> I wanted to take my mind off the snow. Anything else? Uh, Any other good news? Where are we? Oops. I took truck thirty off the road today because it's going to cost thirty percent of the truck's value, or original value, to fix it, so it's not worth it. We have a leak, water leak in the water plant, or uh, from the between the water plant between the wastewater plant and our offices. So every night we shut the water off, so we don't lose more water. Um, he said good news. Oh, is, did he say good yes, news? He did. Oh, okay. So yeah, so things are situation normal, and uh, we're managing every day, and it's it's working fine. No, everybody's uh, the employees are uh, pleased that uh, 
I want to say thank you to the taxpayers that voted for the employee contracts, all of them, police, fire, and and, and our public works people. Um, they truly appreciate it. Um, things are normal. We're literally getting ready for summer. Uh, trash cans uh, take uh, put beach sand back where it needs to go. Those sort of things. So no, we're in a definitely a spring mindset within the, the just, department. Just to be clear, we found this leak. Nobody else found it. Correct. <laughs> we're, we're maintaining that we're going to correct it. So. Yes. I yeah, it did, didn't occur the other way around. Real quickly, and I spent a little time with Chris last week, and I'm very grateful for that. I'm wondering if we as a board can consider getting together sometime in the reasonably near future to start talking about the trash, the waste, the collections, see if we can bring in beach business owners, uh, see if we can have a little round table to start figuring out uh, where we can go uh, so Fred doesn't sit there every Monday night and say we're getting nothing done all we do is pick up trash uh, so I'm hoping that we can have a little round table or, or a discussion uh, for that and then we're available at the board's discussion and then your staffing you still got 12 to go it's gonna be a hard market to try to find people who want to do the jobs we, that we hired uh, two people that started within the last uh, week and a half excellent okay. um, a third one never responded to his right. job offer letter right. um, we have other uh, applicants that we're moving on to so. but you're getting some oh, yeah. recourse for your staffing job market is changing in that some yeah. people are coming to realize that the town does towns do offer good benefits. The health benefit is a is a valuable asset. Mm -hmm. The uh, retirement um, people that you know have longer term uh, thinking or thinking about doing things longer term, and therefore we are we're attracting some quality people. But what you do is hard work, and yeah, and, and we we tell them it's good. Everybody's a laborer, and that's. That's nice to hear that you uh, respect the fact that the taxpayers do vote for the insurance and the benefits yes. that all of the employees get. We, we totally, yeah. everyone I think yeah. in the department realizes it's, it's, not it's a total package. Else. Right. Right. That yeah. it's a total package. You yeah. can go somewhere else and make, let's say, 18 or $20 an hour to start, but you have no benefits. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to fall back on, so to speak. Yeah, talk to anyone that works in an insurance company or a hospital. They don't have the benefits that the town employees have. No, we, they, tr they truly do appreciate it. Yeah. They understand it. And the other thing I want to mention, when we do have our round table, we remember that the taxpayers already voted on how the trash is to be picked up. Absolutely. We, we have to respect the voters at the round table. But there's nothing to say that you can't make adjustments. Right? Yeah, you can put another Warren article next year and see how they feel about it. We need it. to talk about it a little bit. Yeah, well, huh? you all just keep the voters to be part of it. They've already spoken. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Brian McCain. I noticed that we have some of the beach people here. I'm going to be asking some questions. Uh, maybe one of you might want to stay that was at the meeting the other night. Maybe uh, some, because I'm going to be asking some questions about the signs that were recommended by Nancy Stiles. Uh, she showed them to me. And I think if someone's here from the meeting that knows something about those signs, I'd appreciate it. Because as soon as new business or old business, I'm going to question about it. Nice try, Jeff. <coughs> Good evening, Brian. How you doing, Mr. Chairman, members of the board? We are here to seek yeah. funds from yeah, the Channel 22 revolving uh, funds for a uh, total upgrade of Channel 22, including the control room and this room in here. Uh, we will be changing from an analog slash dis digital system that we have currently have now to a SDI high definition. Uh, system. Currently the systems we have now are accumulation of technology from five to twenty years ago. Uh, why HD when we can't put out HD to our uh, to our viewers at home? Well the difference between uh, HD and analog right now there's really not much of any difference. Analog's harder to get. Uh, it, it's technolo technologically inferior. Um, and oh though God. we won't be able to, 
won't be able to uh, put out uh, HD to our viewers. We will be able to stream HG, HD. Uh, there'll be HD in the room. We have the, if we get it, we'll have two monitors in here. Um, with this, with this new system, we will have a much uh, better picture quality. Not that it'll be in HD, but we'll have more pixels, which uh, uh, equates to a better picture. Um, right now, our system, it, it goes, we have many ups and downs, many uh, ups and downs on the system. It'll go from analog to digital, back to analog, back to digital, before it gets to Comcast. With the new system, it'll go from HD, SDI HD to uh, digital one time. So you don't get that downgrade, you don't get the, uh, the poor picture that we do have now. Also, we'll be uh, updating the audio in this room. We'll be updating the, uh, yeah, I know, that's, that would make you happy. And also the audio in this room, I mean, for people in the back so they can hear, because right now it's not, it's not working the way it should. Um, we, we understand this is a lot of money. You've all seen how much it is. But this is a, a system that should be useful for the next seven to ten years. Now, will there be problems? I'm sure there will be. Will there be breakdowns? Sure. But as far as uh, a major expenditure in the next uh, seven to ten years, I, I don't see it. So this is something I think we need to do. I think we need to upgrade. We need to clean house because everything we, we have a patchwork of equipment in here that constantly gives us problems. Even our channel has been giving us problems every week when we uh, go to close it. Uh, it doesn't let us select the file. It just keeps locking up. Uh, the funds that we're asking from, they, they, don't, they come from, uh, they're derived from fees from Comcast that Comcast subscribers uh, have to pay. Uh, and that's where we get the money. Our current balance, as you heard from the finance director, is five hundred and almost five hundred eight thousand dollars. So, right now, I'm going to turn this over to Rick, and Rick's going to go over the uh, bid process that he put together, and uh, the sections that uh, we we you know we have four options, and uh, each each bidder could bid on each option or all the options or whatever they wanted and he'll go over how it turned out. All right, good evening. Um, <clears throat> just um, to give you a little background, um, of course, uh, the world um, dictated by the FCC um, went to digital um, in the United States in 2009. Uh, you're on an analog system here um, that's actually an analog system that does not, in fact, um, completely carry analog. I say that because um, equipment no longer is made in the industry, um, so and has been replaced. So that you actually go that problem that Brian mentioned of going from analog to digital to analog to digital to analog to digital um, is is what the outcome of that has been. Um, so when we started to gather requirements for the new system, um, of course, uh, the industry uh, has pretty much gone away from standard deaf equipment. Um, the cost of, for instance, an HD camera versus a standard definition camera, they're in fact the, the exact same camera. The only difference is is that the output module in the camera itself is um, standard def as opposed to HD. The cost difference between the two is fifty dollars. Wow! So there's real no reason, um, and the industry uh, and the across the industry, pretty much everybody has embraced that that it's just as easy to go to HD if you do need. Uh, standard definition, which we will, um, for Comcast only. Um, we can put in a $400 box at the end of the line before we send it to them. They converts it, and it's done. So um, when we collected all the requirements um, around 
for the things that could be needed to be upgraded here. Um, we started with the production system first. Um, we then went to option two, uh, which included some audio upgrades um, that um, mm -hmm. Brian mentioned. Um, we also felt that the, the room definitely needs some, a little more professional look, if you will, um, so that um, we're replacing, for instance, the, the yellow jacket, I think they call those things, um, yeah. and uh, with something that's a little more ADA um, compliant. We won't trip over it. No. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> It's, as a matter of fact, the ones that um, we specified are only about an, less than an inch tall. So, yeah, it'll be a significant difference to the look of the room um, in, wow. in that. And that's in option one and option two. Um, option three, we replaced this strip lighting and um, actually go with a little more professional lighting in the room and balance the color of the room so that uh, people will be able to see you a little better. Um, and then option four, we added um, some, which is a small cost compared to the rest of it, but it adds some audio sound enhancements to the room um, that um, at one time you actually had, or sort of had. And what I mean by that is you have speakers in the room, um, a couple of them, uh, the, the proper way to do this in the industry now is for them to actually zone the room. So there'll be speakers up front, there'll be speakers in the middle, there's speakers in the back. Um, the microphones or the box out there in the, is that actually recognizes where that mic is coming from and shuts off the speaker in that area so you don't get feedback. And you actually, in fact, had one of those um, that... Uh, unfortunately, it was removed from the system um, solely because it was um, uh, old. The software that controlled it um, was um, something that ran in the XP world, Windows XP. Uh, of course, the Windows XP is gone. They didn't upgrade the software to run with anything else because they stopped making the box. Um, what do you do with it? You take it out of your system. So um, that's an example of what's happened over the years here. Um, so we feel that, um, okay, so in the bid process, um, we did break it into options. Not every vendor um, in uh, integrator out there does everything. Um, so we, knowing that, um, we put it into those options. Um, we had three responses to option one and option two. Um, option three and option four, we only had one response uh, from one of the three vendors that bid on the other section. Um, option one, the low bidder had some problems with his bid um, and um, failed to meet a couple of the requirements. So we disqualified him um, because he didn't cover everything, uh, which put us to the second one. And just by chance, the second vendor happens to be the one that also bid on option three and option four. So that's where we come up with that whole figure from just one vendor. Uh, they'll come in um, different groups or subgroups in that inside that vendor. Um, like their lighting guy, we'll, we'll do the lighting. We'll work with him on that. Um, and we did put out nine bids, did you put out? Well, um, in, in total, I think nine packages went out. We, we identified nine vendors in the Massachusetts slash uh, local eastern Massachusetts, yeah. um, New Hampshire and Maine area. Hmm. Um, had several of them come back and just simply say, we're too busy, so we're not going to... Um, uh, respond to your bid. Thank you very much for thinking of it. Um, and um, and uh, several just ignored us completely, which usually happens uh, in, in, this, in this industry. Jim, you got any questions? Yeah. Uh, a lot of the stuff on here is just little stuff. Yeah. Cameras, lights, etc. Mm -hmm. 
panels, all that. The, the brains of the operation is what the, uh, the, the, the channel. The, the ca cable cast? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, cable it's a tight rope. Uh, we, left, we left it up to the vendors to determine wh what they would recommend um, yeah. because, you know, uh, there's so many. Yeah. Uh, if you ever had the chance to go to the NAB, uh, which is uh, in Las Vegas, it covers the entire Las Vegas. It takes in Las Vegas for an entire week. Um, there's just thousands and thousands of vendors out there. It, it, all three halls are filled. Um, so. Um, the, the bid package was actually designed with the idea of allowing the vendor to utilize his equipment and to look at what he su uh, suggested as the, the best solution for our need. And this, this would be compatible with what the school is doing? I mean, is it the same? No. But it's no, it's not the same. I know no. that. But no. it's, it's com compatible? Would, would you be able to, I mean, would there's we, no problem. Would, would they talk? No, I don't no. believe so. Theirs is a... a a, um, a a soft uh, yeah, yeah it's a cast uh, it's a it's a it's a uh, software based this is a hardware based unit okay. yeah. and and to be honest with you we talked to Paul the IT and he was not comfortable with this because it's too accessible from the outside so you <coughs> can get through it to get to the town okay. so he was not we we saw demonstrations on both tightrope because we have electronics and uh, they, we've lost that. Access AV used to be the vendor for them, but they've since uh, got rid of them. So we don't even know who is the vendor. Around here, uh, Tightrope, which is the one they're suggesting, we went to a, a, a small um, demonstration up the, in Concord on that. And it was, it was an impressive system. And we also, Bedford TV, we went there, and they have the system, and they're very happy with it, and we saw how it works there. Uh, it does have the the tightrope system has includes a carousel, which has a, a web cast capability to to create more. We feel that it's going to give us more um, access to information for the for our viewers um, and for the community. And what I mean by that is we'll be able to include. Um, streaming cameras from the beach to it that's already exist out there. We don't have to recreate anything. We can just reach out and actually take a feed from it and put it, put it on the beach. Uh, people during weather, uh, you know, events would yeah. appreciate that kind of stuff. And then, that kind of stuff. and then we often have problems when somebody comes in with a laptop and they want to make a presentation. Will this make it easy? I mean, we, we won't still be using the no, projector, right? The projector goes away. The screen Monitors goes away. get put, placed here and here and one right in front of this table so that you guys can see it much better. Um, actually mounted below it, below here. Um, so then when they come in with their laptop or right, their thumb driver, right and, how, do they, how do they connect? It includes pop-ups on the tables, power, um, HDMI connectors. Okay. Yes, yes All sir. Right. Okay, super, super. So it'll make it much. Right, and there will be redundancy in the system. This does include two of those tight ropes, so it'll be one in front of the other mirroring it. Case one goes down because we had that problem years ago where we actually went and bought another electronics. One will he'll you can simply he could or if I was trained enough you can go into the on your computer, go to a uh, what do you, what do you one to uh, to to one of the routers. One of the routers and hit a couple buttons and boom you're back on again so until that one can be fixed. So. And once you get this major upgrade, you then can bring up a, a budget that will yes. be how much it will cost. To maintain yeah. that, you, you know, you have your, uh, well, now we use total info, but you're going to have your expenses, your, your uh, service packages and such that you have to do, plus payroll, plus all this. Yes, then we can come up with it. We're still waiting for the, the school to, uh, to figure out what they need, and, you know, that's got to come out of the fund, too. So, but as far as us, yes, that's yeah. what we will do. So, so then, then, then you could, with, when the contract right. comes up, you could start talking about the, the fee and kind cutting it back right, or something, right. right? This is like, like I said, it should be a uh, seven to ten year cycle. You'll have to do it again maybe in seven. I don't know to this extent. You never know what's what's coming back out there, what, what new is coming but on. But if it's up, something, if you keep up with it. And you keep, keep up with it, you'll be all right. Yeah. But, you know, it'll be all new. It'll all be the same. It won't be, like yeah. I said, analog and digital, everything fighting each other yeah. and Thank patched you. together. Thank you. Thank you. Regina? So you said it's not the same type as the school because... Same, no, because again, it was it was on. 
they didn't offer it. Access AV offers that, and they were they were the third in, in the in the actually a higher bid, higher the highest bid, they were the highest the bid. And also, I don't know whether we would have gone with that even under the um, advice of uh, of Paul, because Paul says he's just worried about being broken into. You know, okay. he knows a lot more than that than we do, and he's just really concerned. No, so I understand with that. Yeah. So ours is more hardware based than the right. more software. Yes, but it's. That it'll be much but, more compatible than it is yes, now. I would yes, imagine, right? certainly it would be more compatible in the actual video formats themselves. Right, that will so be. So sharing of, of video between right. the schools and in here and going back and forth with things um, should be much better. Right, yeah, right now it wouldn't be. Right now, we, we, you know, we're, we're so limited on what this can take in. You have to, if you want to. You have to change it to a certain format for anything to work. Whereas this, I believe, you can put about anything in it, it's, and yeah. it'll just do it for you. You know, okay. you can take it off your your cell phone, just put it down, and it'll it'll convert it. I yeah. say it's much needed. Thank you, Rick. <clears throat> yes. First of all, it's nice to meet you. I don't know if I've met you before. No, um, I, no I don't think so. I've been kind of hiding in my <laughs> room <laughs> over here in the basement yeah. and just doing my thing. Well, just good to have you on board. It looks like you're doing you. a good job. Um, and uh, and Brian, you do a great job well, keeping this you. all going and making it what it is. Um, uh, the only question that I have is, it's nice that we have this money now, but you know, do we really know how long this we're going to be getting the same amount of money that we're getting today? Because a lot of people are giving up Comcast. Right. I'm one of them. And a lot of right. people are getting antennas. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> And I hear about it constantly. In fact, I finally went that way too. And the uh, the uh, picture and everything is better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just wonder in the future. And first, I cut down to a smaller package. And I realize we don't always. I don't think we get a percentage of the uh, internet, do we? No, sir. No. Not. Yeah. So, and a lot <clears throat> of people are switching from the internet. So who knows? We might not always have quite as much money, but I think if we use it wisely, it will be a good thing, and uh, people are very happy with uh, with Channel 22. I think they'll be happier yeah. with uh, the sound so quality. It's a great yeah. thing. It looks a lot better as the years have gone by, right. so thank you. Mary Louise? Um, this sounds great. So the life expectancy when you set this system up, three to five years? Ten years. Actually, more more like seven to ten years for for there there's sort of in the industry there's sort of three levels of equipment yeah. if you will, and that is consumer equipment, mm -hmm. three to five years. Prosumer equipment, which is sort of the where we're we're actually landing here with okay. our requirements, um, which is more to, more in lines with professional but not quite there um, and that's anywhere from five to ten seven to ten usually okay um, and then broadcast equipment which um, in some cases to be quite honest with you my background is uh, NASA I had some equipment that was 35 years old oh wow well that was, sounds hopeful by the way mr. Cantor it's nice to meet you um, what are you gentlemen thinking in terms of microphones? Because sometimes at some meetings, some of the individuals kind of go back, go to sleep a little bit, and they're about three or five feet away from the microphones. Training. What are you? What Training kind people to, to stay up front. Uh, we've we've gone from, and uh, you know, we've gone from these. We're going to go back to these, I believe. We're, We're going to go back to back. that. This is what's being back recommended. I, I We've like gone from those to lapel yeah. to these, trying to find the perfect, and these work good. I'm not, they, they, <coughs> so you can lean back and go to the side, but we just have to train, you know, everybody to stand up and talk into the mic if they possibly can, mm. yeah. and not, not lean back and not... Mm. Yeah, take a nap occasionally. We have the individuals come in under public comment, as as you know, and they stand up at the podium and use the microphone. Sometimes they're kind of little; they're not as tall as their their fellow man. Um, is is the microphone setup going to be the same there? It, we'll just have to remind them to pull it down, or yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing that's going to automatically yeah, adjust no, itself. Nothing. Good. I was, I you was can get, to be quite honest with you, they have out in the uh, out in the industry. They actually have 
podiums that will raise and lower. Oh, that's um, neat. But oh, we have uh, can you really <laughs> justify that that I'll kind of uh, cost up. here? Yeah. Probably we not. She'll do it. <laughs> you know. Um. Okay. Facebook, which I detest and I will never go on, but we have <laughs> on the website uh, a little thing that says, you know, like us on Facebook. Can we get rid of that? Is that any risk to us as a system? What? That you don't have anything to do with that. You don't have anything to do with that. Yeah. Oh, but they're telling no. us on, on your website. Oh, to like us, yeah. You like us on Facebook. That on the town uh, that's just on the town's just, website. That's yeah. not on the channel twenty two. No, yeah. that's something oh, different. But it's than, not so that doesn't go through no. you at all. Yeah. As as a matter of fact, um, for what it's worth, I I sort of looked at the system as I designed it um, and and put the specifications together with the with the thinking that, you know, we have a responsibility to try to bring in the younger crowd mm -hmm. um, to watch it and um, some of this would have the capability um, down the road I don't think that you know certainly starting out certainly with our staff uh, the present staff that's in there that's you know mainly vol uh, older volunteer um, that all have jobs um, if we can bring in more student type of help um, uh, people that are interested in getting in the, into the industry mm -hmm. um, that we may be able to incorporate some Facebook type of Facebook type of inputs yeah. tweets that kind of thing if you would you know it, obviously we would be looking closely at that yeah. uh, to see how you would want to do it and how that would be handled that would be up to you right? that's yeah. content that's, all that's not up to us it's just a way of immediately well, getting to people but we can have those yeah. capabilities that's I've got Facebook stock Mary Louise well that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's great but I'm just concerned about the risk pot potentially of exposing uh, some of our residents who might sign on to that site through the town mm -hmm. and have some of their information compromised I'm just, after all, they have the ability to not take it if they want to. They're right. showing you. Well, I mean, do I, don't, the news. I don't. I don't turn it on. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with the. Yeah. the, the yeah. Well, what we talk about here tonight. Like, that would be done the, over. Uh, that would be part done of the at world today. Facebook. Right. I know, and it's a pretty sad part of the world. Uh, just, I just want to check because I had a little. Oh, um, I know. Of course, Brad Jett worked for years with the cable, and uh, now Mr. Cantor is replacing him. Uh, yes. I mean, Brad was never, he was a, uh, uh, well, he did work, before I got here, he had a lot bigger yeah. role. I, yes. I don't know what that was. I wasn't here. Yes, he's replaced, he's actually working during the day. We've never had anybody okay. here during the day. And Hope yes, he is replacing Brad Jett. Brad Jett no longer works. Giving him a nice title. Yes. He right. a nice title and, and a lot of things to do, like putting this bit back. It's an impressive bid. I could have never done it, never ever. So it's, well, obviously, you know, you you need help with the system. But uh, Brad is showing on the payroll report for the for he, 2017. He was. He was as of the beginning of the year. He yeah. was done. So Mr. Cantor is now replacing yes. him. He so. started at the beginning of the year. Excellent. Okay, that's good. Well, this took a lot of good grief. Well, I think you guys have done studying. a great job at, at yeah. bringing this up. You know, we we had the change a couple of years ago in the the Warren article to allow this to come up to us. I think it's well needed. I, I think, uh, you know, I just heard heard from a, from a citizen they were complaining about Channel 13, which has nothing to do with you, but they were complaining about the sound on it. It's been and off I know, for two weeks. And I know we've had sound problems with us. Yeah. Yes. And so I think uh, I think by doing this, we'll, we'll upgrade this room. It'll be a much better place. So I'm looking for a motion. Make a motion that we accept the bids as the for one two three and four options yes all four options okay. yes to do the whole thing so I have a motion and a second all those in favor unanimous good job guys thank you, thank you very Any much of the other Appreciate towns it. around here have uh, like a manager that gets paid most, 50, most do. a year in Northampton Seabrook Exeter Exeter has two and, and is uh, it, do they get paid that kind of money? They they get paid more. They, like Northampton is full time, Exeter is full time, two people full time. So mm -hmm. so Northampton has somebody they pay fifty thousand yes. dollars a year to. That's correct. 
Mm -hmm. um, they have in Bed, um, uh, Bedford, uh, they actually have three people that three work at the station. For, they, have, they have a quite a nice setup. But the also the thing is, too, when you have people that are working like that more time, you can offer more programming, right. more yeah. Well, they have uh, also have public access, there, public yeah, access, which we right. don't have, and that's way down In line. Northampton, they do? No, Northampton, they don't. No, they only have one gentleman, and uh, he has some, he counts on students and such trying to get. And it, it, while I'm here, I'd like to say if anybody's out there, senior citizens, retired people, if, the, if you want to come and work, we're always looking for somebody. And also I want to thank the uh, DPW for sending uh, uh, people down to help us move that console down. I really appreciate it because without them, we would have never got it, it down. It was a yet. monster. It was a monster, yes. Rusty, real quick. Yep. Um, so now we can watch the Mill Pond Dam being built. Right on 22. If we have people to do it. Yeah. If we have people, to, yes. We hope to have a, a person, a young guy that we've had for years, and that will be his job this summer, Excellent. is to do go out, and he loves it. So, and he's got he's got a great eye. So yeah, that would be something. Thank you, you do. for all the work you've done. This is scary for a civilian. <laughs> it was well, a lot of work. It's all it's all Rick. <laughs> So. Okay, very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fred, town manager. Mr. Board. Chairman, I'm going to skip the first item because we've already talked the, uh, the, the pipes in the marsh to death here tonight. Yeah. Uh, the last day to make application for veterans, elderly, blind, or other property exemptions and the Hampton Beach precinct tax exemption is April 16, 2018. Please come and see our assessor's office for the required forms of information. Town and school annual reports are available in the front lobby of the town offices. I received a message from Bob Landry, who was the head of the DO, state DOT bridge division, that the Underwood Bridge was back operational at 11.40 p.m. on this past Friday. And I've received a message, uh, a flyer from uh, the Hampton Beach Area Commission, who will be holding a public hearing on Thursday, May 10th, the Marston School Cafeteria at 7 p.m. The topics include transportation grant for Route 1A, Hampton Beach traffic flow, parking areas at Hampton Beach, and traffic and pedestrian safety issues. Please attend to be informed of the plan as one component to be included the engineering plan for the reconstruction of Route 1A, which will begin as part of the DOT 10-year plan in 2018. Wow. That's it, sir. Questions for the manager? You have a couple of questions. Uh, not on anything you mentioned, but Smutty Nose has been sold, right? Uh, or in the process? It's in the process of being sold. Okay. At the closing, we'll get our taxes? That's what the law says. Either okay. that or we'll get the plant. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, you know, I noticed that there was a... Uh, Who gets there's, the beer? There's a private... There's a if private we get the plant, we get the beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I think it's serious. I mean, we've got to really watch that. I mean, there's a oh, private ski area in Vermont that the state closed because they were not... Yeah. paying their taxes. They just went in one day and said, bang, you're closed. You're not operating anymore. And I think we have to take a firm stance on that, that we get those taxes those yeah. in a raise. That doesn't happen in New Hampshire. Yeah, I know, but still. The option gotta, here is that we end up with the property and the business. Yeah, we got to be vigilant. The other thing is that Smutty Nose has been over. Their BOD and, and uh, yeah. TSS three. On, on three occasions. Mm -hmm. and I've, I've asked the Department of Public Works to draft an amendment to the policy, which will fine them every time they go over the limit. Okay, have we talked with the new owners? Have they been in? Have they. The new owners have not been in. The, the, the proposed new owners have not okay. been in. Okay. Mm. All right. But We're I mean, waiting for them. They have to come in within the. Let's see. Uh, my understanding was that the passage is going to occur within, within 90 days. So they have to be here um, before that period of time to discuss with us what they're going to do and how they're going to do it and what the requirements are. Okay. Because within 30 days of their assumption, they have to apply for the proper permits from the town and the state. Yeah. If they don't apply within that, then they're shut off. There's no more beer being produced. Okay. We don't want to go there either. All right. The other thing that I, that, that I wanted to mention when Chris was here and I didn't, Lafayette Road and I guess it's over now, but with, where it wasn't plowed, the sidewalks, I mean, there were people walking in the, in the middle of the street, up and down, right in the section, going towards Hannaford's and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. And I know that there was, there was uh, equipment broken, but did we have, 
Both our sidewalk tractors at the time were broken. Okay. They were repaired. We did we did clear the snow. Um, also, I think you have to realize that we have we're down a number of employees. Yeah. And yes. and the requirement of being down a number of employees means that we uh, we have to wait to finish our regular plowing before we can put people on sidewalk yeah. equipment to clear the sidewalks. No, I realize that totally. But what I'm just saying is that there are elderly people who walk to Hannaford's. Yes. And it, it, you know, in, the, in that in that that road's mm -hmm. hecked across yeah. it, even across walks. No, it's a disaster lights. to cross that yeah, road. It's a disaster. <coughs> so I just make sure that we're on top of that. Um, well, that's I all think, I have. I, I think the secret to that is that, and we're going to have to do something about, or the town will have to do something about this sooner or later. Is you're going to have to require hire the number of employees required to take care of all the jobs when they when they become due yeah. instead of later on. Yep. You're right. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. We should be asking these questions under old business. Regina, well, this is the time when it, it's. Well, it's the report. That's what we're supposed to be asking the questions of the town manager for the report, and the other's old business. All right. Well, I, I was going to bring that letter up too. So. Okay, then <laughs> let's talk about it at old business. That's when we should be doing it. But it's not old business. It's yes, it is old business. That's what we have old business. I have old business too that okay. I want to talk about. But all we right. should all be asking questions all right, all right. of these all right, issues. I have a this is the questions for his report. Public hearing on the Hampton Beach Area Commission is May 10th. So is it possible to maybe get a reminder for this when it's a little bit closer? Because I have I know some people that actually live down in the precinct area that might be You should mention it every week. Right. Well, we're going to put, put it, it up on the website so people can see it. But yeah, yes, we'll mention it again yeah. before May 10th. Yeah. So people right. will, will know to because a lot of these ho these are hot topics here i know for a lot of people that live in uh, work down there mm -hmm. and uh i think they're sort of hot topics for the selectmen too that don't seem to really know too much about what goes on with them so i would like to uh just keep that as a reminder i guess i'll remind myself and yeah. there anything? um no but i do have stuff under all business so i can Mary these Louise. guys can leave it Toward the end, Fred, of what you were saying on your report, now you said about 1A. Could you reiterate that a little bit? Basically, is Rick going to get some relief for the drainage? I'm not going to predict what's going to happen. Right. Uh, I, I'm not in charge of this construction, but they're going to start the process of the 10 year plan construction in 2018. Okay. That may mean just the planning portion without the actual construction. Oh. You, you've got to get plans finished Don't and, hold and dedicated. Your breath. Okay. Um, but they're they're looking at the transportation grant for Route One A, which is a I believe it's a federal state grant. Uh, Hampton Beach area traffic flow. You can't design the system without knowing and anticipating yeah, what traffic right. flow is going to be. Uh, parking areas at the beach and and traffic and pedestrian safety, including the actual engineering plan for the reconstruction of Route One A. Okay. So the hearing will be on those subjects and perhaps more yeah. questions are answered. Doesn't reference drainage specifically, but if they're going to redo 1A, maybe that will Hopefully. be a side benefit. There's, there's a lot of other. Yeah. Yeah. In, in Rick's particular case, uh, there's no municipal drainage in that area. It's all state. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they'll have to do a si significant amount of work. But I don't believe this construction plan goes that far. Okay. <laughs> no, it only goes to the um, to the Boar's Head, oh. and but it is being considered to go to Winnicunit Road, and that's going to be part. It's going to be talked about at that meeting. Okay. So I, you know, if you can watch, if you want to know all about go. it, watch the Hampton Area Commission. Okay. From old last business. Week. I will. Jim, you got anything into old business? Just what I mentioned before. Regina. Um, no, I just wanted to say that I went up and I joined in Concord on the uh, Seacoast Cancer Cluster oh, yeah. Commission this morning mm -hmm. because they had EPA there as well as DES and also Robert Sullivan representing, I guess, Portsmouth and the Coakley Landfill Group was there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do anything at the meeting. It was Attorney Gerald that uh, really uh, through EPA, DES, and uh, Coakley Landfill threw a wrench in there. He pretty much just said that the... The professional that we hired, Tom Bellastero, who actually taught many of the uh, people who are running the Environmental Protection Agency today, had suggested months ago at a Northampton public meeting that he was concerned that we were trying to get Coakley to set up additional monitoring wells to find out where, what was coming out of it. And he really suggested that he set up 
wells at the southeast and the south portion, and that was sort of overlooked, and it's yeah. been overlooked, and no one ever brought it up again. And Mark brought it up today in front of the commission, and mm -hmm. the commission pretty much have forced uh, both the EPA and DES to recommend it at a meeting they'll be having this Friday, which of course is not open to the public, oh. but hopefully minutes will be taken for it between EPA, DES, and the Coakley Landfill Group. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that while it's safe that we don't know exactly where PFCs are coming from, we have also problems with our own landfill, and I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that probably every single landfill that was closed in this state was probably closed improperly and shouldn't have been closed the way it was. We still have a lot of test work to do, but I think that Coakley, if they are a suspect, then they need to be held accountable for yeah. producing the records that I think should be made public. And according to the Hampton Union yesterday, Tony Sullivan says that, that those records will be produced by Wednesday of this week. So hopefully that will actually be the case. And if it's not, I think that this board needs to continue following up on it because it's 91A request. The organization represents mostly municipalities and the money that is being spent is being spent by municipal taxpayers. So I feel that we do have the right to know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Rick? Yeah, I'm sorry I asked those guys to stay because I didn't, didn't expect for them to have to stay this long. Um, but I did want to ask, as I was talking to Nancy Stiles, and she w uh, was talking about these signs, and I know that she mentioned them to I you, Fred. I think they're Fred. great. Yeah. And uh, basically, um, I, from talking to um, Chuck and Dean, that there, nothing was really adopted. It was just a, dis uh, a discussion. Um, yeah, come on up here. Uh, the red one, which really looks good, is evidently copyrighted. It can't be used. You can't use uh, Clifford yeah, the Big Red Dog. Yeah, because that was the one I like, too. I didn't. Who is he? Clifford the Big Red Dog. And what does he do? Um, Clifford? Cartoon. He's oh, a cartoon. 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 Yeah. Yeah. He would cost us a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. so. uh, I guess just for the record, I, I'm Dean Merrill. Um, I'm the vice chair of the Hampton Beach Commission. And, and Chuck is a uh, representative on the commission for the Hampton Beach Village oh, okay. District. So. Um, Maybe I'm going to go off side a little bit here because you're talking about that meeting. Um, yeah. The meeting is all set. Uh, we're just starting in the planning cages. I, to the extent of, of people that are going to be notified, um, we're, we've already got in wheels uh, motions um, to be have things posted here. It's going to be posted uh, on the chamber website. There's going to be direct mailings going out. And the there's also going to be website. two or three people knocking on doors. Uh, down in the beach area um, to make people aware because we want to get a good crowd there. Mm -hmm. And basically the, the meeting will be done by the state, as, as Fred has mentioned, is a, um, it's a transportation section, um, but they'll be there with an overhead and they're going to have tables with, with the whole schematic so you can look at them wow. closely. So um, they've done, done a lot of work. After the input, then the commissioners will decide on the different plans which direction we want to go in. Yeah. So the more input we have, um, so we're going to try everything possible to uh, to get the word out to you know not have two or three people there, but as many as uh, it's an opportunity for the public and and uh, um, the the you know the police and the fire and whatever to take a look at it too. Mm -hmm. so. So, so the signage, the signage. Yeah. Um, we talked to uh, Mike Hausman, who's from yeah. the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have their their glass how their glass signage on the beach. Uh, he's going to look into having allowing us to put signage there, mm -hmm. and the village district is going to look into signage and possibly have um, the beach businesses, um, uh, uh, you know, push for yeah, keeping like the beach in, clean. Yeah, like the places and that for people maybe like do not litter for places that are. Uh, where a lot of the litter originates or something like that. So this is a work in progress that is um, going on. Um, and uh, I'm not sure. Uh, in Hampton, Fred, is there an ordinance for a $100 first offense for do not litter? Hmm. We have a, a, a almost a death penalty ordinance for littering. <laughs> yeah. And, and we'd like to keep it that way so people will obey it. Yeah. And there is a very high fine. It runs yeah. up to $500 for a third offense. 
Uh, when was the last time we gave up a thousand dollar fine? Haven't. Yeah, we, we, we haven't. haven't. That's so, exactly my point. These litters, uh, these yeah. litters, these signs, um, they're pretty hard to like. The police don't run and go after them when there's a hundred dollar first offense or a five hundred second offense. Although we have to hope that everyone wants to do the right thing, and that's where the power of these signs are. And um, you know, it's the same thing uh, nationwide with the gun control and all. You have to always hope that people are going to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why when we heard from Anthony that was here tonight that wants to have no smoking at the beach, where many other people feel the same way and nobody wants the cigarette butts put out into the sand. I think that for the two beaches that we have, we could easily put up a sign, maybe one that says not to litter either. Uh, also, the whole state has gone uh, all over the state. They don't do it in Hampton anymore that says, please carry out what you've carried in. But I've seen them all up in um, uh, the Kangamangas uh, Highway and all of that. They're everywhere. And I'm sure that they don't throw people in jail either. Uh, and the, there's no one police enforcing it. So I would like to make a motion now that we put up some signs that I, the word I thought of earlier is policy. Not that it's an ordinance. You know, the Hampton has a policy of no smoking in the beach. That's very similar to there's a policy of no smoking in this building. And many other buildings that the town has, do, I, I don't know if we allow smoking in the fire department uh, allow smoking or the police in, department. No smoking within public buildings, no smoking within public vehicles. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And you, yes, you can be arrested for that if, yeah. if it's a ser so serious enough offense. I think that we could afford just two signs. The will of the people definitely overwhelmingly asked for this no smoking. And I think the price of two signs and just hope that people do the right thing, hope they're not carrying guns to the beach either. But, you know, <laughs> you have to hope that people are doing going to do the right thing. Those sharks are dangerous. So I'd like my motion to be that Hampton put up two signs at our town beaches that say that we have a policy of no smoking on public town beaches. What about the litter? Yeah, can we add litter Well, we it? could do litter, too. Yeah. No smoking or litter. Wait, I'll second that in open for discussion. Okay. Yeah. okay. What, what did the article say? An ordinance or? I've got it right here. What did it say? It probably does say ordinance, but I'm end. asking for well, something I'm different. I'm wondering what it said, first yeah. of all. It's, it's way at the end. Right? Yeah, I just had it here. Because yeah. um, I'm under order. 44 or yeah. something like that. Yeah. It says, um, that's Sonny Kravitz. Uh, it was right in there. Maybe it's the next Yeah, one. it's, I think. It's very short. Is that it right there? Second for, uh, from the bottom? No. Yeah, it's oh, right yeah, at it the is. end. Yes. To, to the selectmen of Hampton, the undersigned legal voters of the town of Hampton request that you insert in the warrant article uh, warrant for the next town meeting the following prohibits smoking on all town beaches in Hampton. Yeah. I would just like to say that we have a policy of no smoking. Mm -hmm. And I think that they'll be happy with that. That's fine. And, uh, you know, that way it doesn't put any burden on the police. And I'll tell you, even those news reporters, they were all thinking this is really good and the fact that they played it for four days as part of their news I think it says something my sister saw it in Florida oh. so it somehow somebody picked it up and took it on to another ABC station or NBC, NBC it up, yeah. Yeah. didn't break the camera no <laughs> Rusty you look better than me that's what I didn't care for um, no. so uh, you know I, that's my motion all right so we have, we have a first a second, a second. A second yeah. all those in favor thank Unanimous. you thank you I hope we can. It's going to make Hampton Beach better all the way around. Oh, okay. I'm not finished with my old business yet. Good. Good. Can um, we go? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, guys. Um, the other one that I wanted to ask about, and I, I mentioned this to uh, Fred, that uh, uh, Ralph Dump Dumpke, that is the person that's behind Article 43. He's not a resident of Hampton. But he does have a house here, and uh, you know he lives in it uh, six months of the year. Uh, and he would just like to come in and discuss some of this and ask some questions. What was the article? This for? is the article on Second petition of Park. Norm Hurley and 25 other registered voters. Should the town vote to uh, 
move the fire lane from the south side oh, of right. second street to the north side just so that he could discuss what his issues are so that we can understand he's got a wonderful home there and um, he's even encouraged other people to come to Hampton and his you know people from where he goes in Florida have bought homes here so I think it would be good to uh, have him come in and let's hear his uh, if he's a property owner and he, he owns property, I can't see why we, we can't yeah. allow him to. And he's a, he's a nice guy, I can tell you that. Yeah, town meeting can't vote the article. Only the selectman by statute can change that. Yeah. Right. But it would help him to understand it, and we can have a nice discussion, and he's yeah. not going to take well, a vote. Well, a property case. owner. He should have, have a right to come in and make an appointment. So that's Ralph Dun Dunkey for, uh, to be on the agenda for next week, next on the week. second, because he's okay. here from Florida. Oh, okay. And he has a business here also, so... Thank you, I appreciate that. That's all I have for old business. Oh, yeah, I think, I, oh, I have one more thing. Someone <laughs> called me just before I left. He was working hard. Uh, the, this has to do with the beach also. What is happening that um, there was a, an altercation of, of residents that live on the corner of um, 101 and Ocean Boulevard that uh, they're trying to get rid of the sand that's in front of their oh, place. Now who's okay. going to be picking that up? Should the state be doing that? It's on the sidewalk and it's high. This is 101 and Ocean Boulevard? Yes. So 101 Church and Street. Ocean Boulevard. Church Street, yeah. Church Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Church Street is, is a compact road. Mm -hmm. We're responsible for that. Urban compact. In the past, of course, that sand all came from the state road. Okay. Yeah. In the uh -huh. past, the state has cleaned that up. Uh -huh. That's but what I'm I told gonna, them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to question because I've heard nothing yet about the state doing any cleanup where their sand has gone off onto town roads. In well, the past, we've insisted they do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's something that we have to discuss because they're not the only ones. As I drove along, I went down there to check before I came here tonight. Yeah. And in front of the condos to the north of the lighthouse, there's sand all over there. So somebody's got to clean it up. And if it's the state is responsible for this, they need to be, to, we, it's again, it's one of those problems about the sidewalks. And I'm sure there are many others. The rocks are everywhere. Oh, yeah. And uh, I saw people picking them up today, but I'm not so sure that they're uh, people from the state. And I, uh, personally, I think the state ought to be picking those rocks up and throwing them over the wall because they're going to just have to buy some and put them there at some point. More than likely that's true. Because everybody's picking them up for their yard. And we and building fire we're going to have a problem this year with, with sweeping the beach because of the new EPA requirements. Yeah. If we sweep the beach as we have done be, before, because the state would not do it, we have to have each of those loads tested before we can dispose of them. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, my, my solution to that is that I'm going to ask the state where they would like us to dump it on their property so they can test it. Yes. Because I, I don't have thousands of dollars in my budget to test each load of, of uh, sweeping yeah. off the state highway. They, they need to buy their own sweeper and they need to do that work. It's their highway. Good. Uh, we, we, I don't, we can provide the information to them. We can provide the material to them. But I don't have the money to test it. And it's going to have to be tested. Each load is going to have to be tested is my understanding. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's an expensive proposition to do. So I just, I think somehow we have to work out some cooperative effort between us, uh, or we may be in a position of not being able to sweep that, that Ocean Boulevard, mm. which I don't want to see happen, because it's going to be a real mess down there if we don't. Mm -hmm. So this, and we should put all these other streets that, that are on the side that are now full of sand, and I, I've looked at them, they are full of sand, uh, on that same list. Mm -hmm. They should be cleaning those up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll tell you, every single time it rains, mud hits my building from it comes off the road. Yeah. I sweep it right back into the road. Yeah. And it usually floats down and goes in the sewer. It's probably <laughs> going up to this uh, new drain problem that we have. <coughs> probably going to spend two months this year just cleaning our own drains on our side streets yeah. off of Ocean Boulevard that are now full of sand and then have to flush all the lines in between them because wow. they're full of sand, too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those are some issues that we got to start paying attention to. We do. Mary Louise, you have any old business? Oh, yes. I don't want to disappoint you. Um, I spent some time with Chris Jacobs uh, last week uh, talking about Article 9 and the um, 
drainage work on the Route 1. I think we need to sit down with him. Uh, the lighting was the part that really had me concerned when we were, were talking, and that's pretty complicated. He said something to the effect that the experienced Hampton people had promised um, if we go with that ornamental lighting that they will raise the money to bury the uh, electric lines and all that. I'm really skeptical about what that thing is going to entail, so I, th I think I'd be more comfortable if we sat down with Chris one of our meetings reasonably soon to get a grip on it. He seems comfortable that the drainage and sewer lines on Route 1 will be complete this year. But the ornamental lighting is a big question mark, and, and I have a, um, I'm concerned about that. So I think I'd like to see him come in, and him and Jen even, and explain a little more detail the cost of that actual lighting and the labor involved and the involvement of the experience Hampton. Um, next one, Smutty Nose. Now, as I understand it, the brewery, and the property with the restaurant are two separate pieces. They're not the same piece of property. Well, I mean, they're, they're all together, but isn't it two separate entities? Same I, business, same business, same owners. Oh, okay. Uh, because I saw the same you know, report that, that you gave us that Jim referenced. I think at the point in time where the new owner or owners is ready to sign on the dotted line and want to come in and get our approval or whatever we have to do. They have to have a pre-treatment facility in there. I don't want to see people losing their jobs because I know they're employing a good number of people to produce the beer. And I like beer as much as anybody. Maybe they'll be Welch's lager. I don't, know. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they can't keep doing this and they can't keep loading that uh, effluent into our treatment plant. We've got enough problems. We're looking at $41 million to rehabilitate the treatment plant. And I think we need to have something locked in there, period, as to what they are going to be dumping into our system. They've got three now, three citations for what they're putting in. And uh, I also think that we should sit down and discuss that industrial surcharge fee in depth and see whether it is it should be applicable to the smutty nose situation. We're not going to roll over and play dead as taxpayers. We really need to get accountability there. Now, I had a couple here, and then I did smutty nose. Oh, and... Uh, well, I guess you wouldn't call. I, I think I'll do this under new business. I think I'm all set on old business. Okay. Um, while we were talking on the signs, can uh, can we also look at putting the the dog waste signs along with the bags down there, like the state has? We yeah, each one take of, them into the winter time. But usually, yeah. each one of the entrances yeah. down there, they have the they have the signs with the bags. Right. And we have stuff the same signs, same bags. Encouraging, and I think we, we need to have those at both. The, yeah. all, we should have it at all, all of our parks, not only just our be our beaches, but yeah. we should have them at the parks also. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. was part of what I was being consistent that we use these. Fred, Nancy did talk with Fred. Okay. Yeah, about yeah. It. And uh, the other thing I had is I had a, a, a person ask me about the Kino. Now that we've passed it, all all that a business has to do, as long as they make the state requirements, is go to the state and apply for it. Correct? That's correct. We've passed the ordinance. The state is aware of the fact we've passed the or the, the acceptance of the statute, and anybody who wants to engage in Keno needs to go and make an application yeah. directly to the state. Good. Okay. New Mr. business. Mr. Chairman, oh, so I just yeah. have one thing because Rick brought something up on old business. If did you say Ralph Dundee was the resident's name? Mm -hmm. If he is scheduled to come in next week, I know there's some very concerned neighbors about that article, too, in that area. So I'm going to inform them. Well, they should come under old business. I mean, not. I mean, they should come under to talk ahead of time. Well, that's, yeah, that's Ralph's, what I'm tell Ralph them wants to, to. Yeah, they should talk for community comment. Oh. Ralph has asked to be on the agenda for himself. Okay. So they could come in and speak at, at public comment. Yeah. Right. 
where yeah. it's going to be on the agenda. They can speak on agenda items, so they'd have a right to come in and speak. Yeah, good. It's not part of Ralph's appointment. No, but I mean, it would be nice if it, they came in at the same week as what I was right, saying. Right, but so. they, if, yeah. if, if, right. If, it's on, if it's on public the agenda, comment. they can come in with a public comment For, and speak. You know, whatever the time is, that's allowed. Yeah. Yeah, right. if they're going to they take their year round, so I think they should have a say on it too. If they're, so. they're going to take more than three minutes, they should they should send a letter with their points in it. So it'll, yeah, it'll get it'll get read by that's the board. Good too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. New yeah. business. New business. Um, yes, I do have a new business. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to be gone the next two weeks, and I was talking to, I actually talked to um, the town manager, assistant town manager, town council, and uh, Rusty happened to be there as well. And I'm not sure because of everything that's gone on with the marsh pipes and things like that, this is my, this is why I initially thought of this, but I was concerned about maybe if I need, wanted to vote on some of the things like that were happening because I wasn't sure exactly what the extent of how it was going to go on with the mosh pipes, whether we had to make major decisions in the next two weeks. Yeah. It just felt like everything was happening at one time. And while I'm understanding that I believe it is legal for me to call into a meeting mm -hmm. if I was concerned about something on the agenda, I just didn't know perhaps I want to bring it up to the board because I think we need to implement some type of a policy or procedure in order to do that. I think there already is one. Right. It requires a vote of the Board of Selectmen at the time this happens. Mm -hmm. oh, there okay. has to be an interconnected telephone here, and it has to be able to be heard by everyone, including people on TV, and we can arrange that. That's not a, that's not a difficult situation. Uh, they have to be able to hear the person calling. Yep. They have to be able to talk to the person calling. <laughs> so every, everybody's in this just like the person's here in the room. And that's we, what we, we can arrange to do that. Pratt, Pratt one at one point <coughs> in the right. hospital. Yeah. And, and, and it's a matter of the board voting it the night that it happens. Each time it happens, you oh, have to okay. vote it. So everybody knows what's going on. No. There's no mystery. And I don't think that that particular th item is going to come up within the next two weeks. No, well, no, no. It, it, it's not, but it could come up over the year yeah. for any one oh, of yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think it's good to have a policy on that, and I think it's good to know the policy. And if you look at, if you're not going to be here and you look at the agenda and you see something that, you want to do call in the Monday before and let them know so they can set the room up so that they can have the right. that phone the speaker right. phone or the Friday before not the Monday well, yeah, the Friday before. Yeah, the Friday before well yeah they can do it Monday morning yeah. and set it yeah. up for Monday night but just to make sure so that we can make sure that it's set up and that, that would go for any board member right right and the other reason why was because Aquarian could not schedule because of their scheduling conflicts they could not schedule to be here this Monday so that now got postponed till next Monday, which I am still planning on dialing in for the upstairs phone call and then relaying any of my concerns to both town management and Aquarian. So when they come down here, mm -hmm. you'll pretty much know where I'm coming from. But I did have a couple concerns that recently came when we got the landfill results last week. And I was talking to some people that have lived up in that area for a very long time and they're not the mm -hmm. only ones that sha shared these same concerns yeah. with me. Town manager also did too at some point. About with the implementation of this new Well 22, just because of the depth of it, yes, quite right. deeper than all the other wells around, and also the 1.35 million gallons a day that it's going to be mm -hmm. able to. Yeah the pressure, the pressure of it, I was concerned. And I emailed Carl and uh, Mr. Walsh and Brian Mills on Thursday. And Carl was out and he did get back to me this afternoon. I really haven't had time to look at the response, but he outlined a couple of his initial thoughts and then explained a lot of more of what I was looking for was probably part of the uh, large groundwater withdrawal permit. But I, like I said, I haven't had time to process it. Hopefully mm -hmm. I can before next Monday. And I forwarded it on to the town manager. Mm -hmm. And I believed he did give it to the rest of the board. So A lot of material I think about. Okay. So I just wanted to say that, you know, the communications are good. And I'm planning on keeping them really well. And I will be dialing in for that upstairs call. And then just maybe if something did yeah. come about after right. that okay. that I wanted to be a part of, I would let the town and you, Mr. Chairman, know. Very good. Thank you. Rick, anything new? Yeah, I have several new, but I just wanted to, I, I was surprised that this was marked confidential, 
Because I don't see any, I mean, maybe there's a big legal reason, but I don't see that it's anything but transparent well, you, to have somebody You need somebody to ask call. him before you. Yeah, and, and uh, I don't have any problem with a selectman accessing you know, at the meeting if they're out of town or on vacation or incapacitated or whatever. But Fred, if we voted, Russ, you said something about voting to put the policy in, but would that absolve us from having to take the vote every time a person should call in? I think you need, to, Mark, you need to do that every time they call. Um, well, I think if you know in advance that you're you can put not it going agenda. to be, you could put it like tonight, there could be a vote to allow that next time so that oh, we could okay. have it set up. Yeah. Okay. But it's not an overall one. We'd have to go pretty much case by case. Um, well, I hadn't thought about having a policy on that. I think if the board had a policy on that uh, in advance, that's the same as a vote. That's what I thought. So do we have a policy? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Can you, could you work on one? We could work on that. Okay. But, for, but for next week where Regina is going to be away, if the right. board could vote tonight to yeah. allow that, we we'll can make a motion that yes. we allow I'll second it next it. week. All those in favor? Did we have a second? Yeah, Rick okay. did. So. Okay. All right. I still have old business if you're... You're on the new business. Still, still I'm a new business, I'm sorry, in with me. Um, what is your procedure as the chair as far as putting something on the agenda? Should we email you, call you, stop you in the hall? What, what's that's, that's the way it's been for four or five years now that it, it comes, you bring it to the town, bring it to the chair or bring it to the uh, town manager and we look at it on Thursday afternoon, Fred? Is that usually? Thursday afternoon. The budget, uh, budget. Uh, the agenda closes on Wednesday at five o'clock. That gives us a chance to put everything together. Oh, okay. And internal to the board, you have things to do between then and Friday morning when we post it. So, yeah. okay. so once it's posted. I just want to get a, a yep. rough idea of what we're doing. Um, number two, um, I noticed on Seacoast Online that the se it says Senate removes funding source for firefighter cancer benefits bill. I was appalled. And of course now with losing Kyle Jamison so recently and that has affected all of us, but I was rather put out. I don't know if any of you saw that article, I but I think that's disgusting. Um, next, I would like to ask um, if, Chair, if Chief Ayotte would be kind enough to provide this board with a list of his firefighters who uh, use the turnout gear. And I, they had an article on the um, cable uh, last week, I think it was, a little community in Maine, and they stopped the firefighters in that community from responding because their turnout gear was more than 10 years old, and they said it was too much of a risk. So adjacent communities had to pitch in if any firefighting duties came up. They ran the EMT and the ambulance, but they were taken offline and they were told that they could not respond. I'd like to just get a list if the chief would be kind enough. Uh, per, by firefighter, they, I understand they each have two sets of um, uh, gear, and I would like to see how old those sets are and what might be coming up for us to have to uh, you know, provide uh, more turnout gear sets if needed. I don't. I haven't kept up with that, so I don't know. Although what. the gear that they currently use is is in fact dated and 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 is Good. has been re, is being replaced on an annual basis. Right. So that we replace every ten years, we have all the equipment replaced. Okay. And it's in the budget every year. Could, so could we just have a brief note or something from the chief acknowledging uh, when it was done? Or He's going to be in, and you can ask him when he reports. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, all right. He'll okay. be in for his, his... He comes on a regular basis. His quarterly well, report he'll be in, which will probably be soon. And I don't believe everyone has two sets of gear. But. Well, they're supposed to have two sets of gear. Well, when he comes in, we'll find but out I about it. They, 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 do, they yeah. better have. Um, Let's see, the town forest article did pass. Um, very nice job by the Conservation Commission. 
Now, please, may we, Rick is talking signs tonight, so I will too. May we have appropriate signs placed at White's Lane and Jaunty's Lane telling the individuals to come in there, who come in there, that there will be no shooting in the town forest. Also, you might put something on about littering because those fools that were in there shooting left their shell casings and littered all over the place. Yeah. So, uh, but, but I think the signs need to be updated if you'd be so kind. See, it's all Rick's fault because he's doing signs too. Um, I think that's all I have. Okay. Do we have a... Mr. Chairman, if, uh, if we could, I would like to uh, ask the board to make a motion to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small e consideration or negotiation of pending claims or litigation. I will so move. Second. Anybody roll live call. second? Okay. Good roll call uh, please. Yes. Yes. Aye. yes. 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 Regina is out of the room. Thank you. So thank you channel 22.